Hey, we look kind of matchy. I know, but opposite. Wow. We should change like pants and shirts or something. Yeah. That reminds me, we we're supposed to do that one episode where they uh, they said we should ask oh. answer questions as, as each, each other, other, dress as each other. True. We haven't done that yet. True. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of the Family Standards Podcast. My name is James or Wendy. And I'm Amanda or Mandy Cat. It's like as soon as we started, she knew and she Yeah. I was begging her to come over earlier. What the <laughs> heck? <laughs> That's so funny. We're being uh, blessed by Miss Shorts over here. Come here. We're gonna try to have her actually in frame. She's always here, but she's always just out of frame. Yeah. Except for that one episode where she was all over it. True. That's true. With hoodie and everything. <clears throat> I'm going to have to apologize in advance, you guys, if my voice seems a little raspy and I'm clearing my throat a lot. We did something new last night. <laughs> yeah, we did a, a, a sorry, we're going to jump right into it, guys. Yep. This is a TMI warning. Here we here we go. I think if you're listening to this, you should ass- I know, ass- but, assume and expect that. But sometimes we start kind of soft and I'm about to just like <laughs> throw it right in their faces. Hey, that's fine. <laughs> That was your warning, okay? Um, ooh, we're being Hi, blessed by a hoodie, too. I was too. just saying, where is she? Hi, baby. Um, yeah, last night we filmed a throat fucking video, which um, we have been asked for a lot. I have been asked for a lot. Uh, and specifically with a throat pie, <laughs> which I actually didn't know what that was at the beginning. Um, I mean, it kind of sounds obvious if you if you think about it, but I really I had to like make sure that I knew what it was. Anyway, yeah, we we did that. We did that. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to handle it, but... Yeah, I mean, I wasn't sure if you're able to handle it either because, oh, yeah. I mean, when, since you've been sick, your throat's not been doing good. Yeah, my throat's been bad for about a month. So. Yeah. Uh, and then <laughs> also, we just don't do that a lot. No, it's just not our style. There's... I can't remember when, but there's just this one time where we were doing that and... It, it was the first time where it felt good for both of us, I felt like. You were trying to explain that to me and I don't remember. Yeah, well, it was just that one time. I just, okay. I don't know, it was a certain position or angle where it just felt like it was easy in your throat, but also just like, I felt like it got really sucked in. Not last night, another no, 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 time. No, 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 this okay. is like just a personal sex. Okay. But that was the only time really. And that was when I thought about like, wow, man, what, if, what would happen if I just like ejaculated that deep in, mm. you know, so. So you can understand where the fantasy comes from. I mean, a little bit. Okay. If it's that deep, it would it just go straight down? I mean, it it kind of did. Yeah. But I was hanging upside down, so then it kind of didn't. <laughs> yeah. That was a hard one to film just because of angles. That was a really hard one to film. Yeah, it would have yeah. been really handy to have had a cameraman for that one. Uh, it was very messy. It's so funny because um, <laughs> we, we've talked about this before. That's just not our style. We're not really hardcore uh we're not really messy sex kind of people i don't hate it like i didn't hate doing it i actually had fun exactly um but it's not something that like without the camera would we typically tend to do on our own yeah uh it's always somebody asking us to do it and we have to kind of like you know banter back and forth whether or not we're willing to do it basically and even you you felt bad (laughs) like are you gonna be okay can you handle this and i'm not a super big fan of it either again except for that one time but yeah most of the time i just don't like the way it feels well you even said like it doesn't actually feel that good so yeah in my opinion the only reason why somebody would be that obsessed with it is just the concept of like fucking a throat i'm sure it could feel good if the person that's doing it really opens up their throat because again if i can recall that one time it felt really good it just it did feel like just a deep cavity right kind of like what a vagina would feel like okay interesting yeah yeah, yeah. yeah so the <sighs> It's funny because, like, obviously when I suck dick, I can deep throat. That's fine. But, like... Keeping it open is a different story. It's different. And I can tell when I think you're at the... Like, you are hitting the back of my throat repeatedly. Mm -hmm. And then it gets to a point where I gag. And it's when I start to gag that it opens Opens up up. further. Yes. And you can get back there further. Yes. And then you're, like, mid-almost gag. And Uh, you just, like, uh, have to hold your breath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then you can keep going. I think that's basically what they say. That's how you do it. I... Yeah. (laughs) how crazy is that and like as i'm hanging upside down in my head i i was like oh man if i puke like it's it's going all up my nose it's gonna go all down my face i didn't i didn't gag that hard but it was a thought that crossed my mind so yeah i mean we even said you even said that 
it's nice that we trust each other. Oh, hundred percent. And I asked you like, well, what do you mean? And you're like, well, because I could tell when you can tell that I wasn't doing good and you backed off. Yeah. You know, Cause we can, we can feel that off of each other. We and, didn't, I mean, we didn't need to have like, Oh, that, if I squeeze your thigh, that means back off. Like oh, we no, just no, know no. each other enough yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I can feel when it's, yeah, I can just feel it change in, totally. in body tension. Yeah. So yeah, I, I trusted you wholeheartedly with that whole, with that whole experience. It was funny because when we had talked about whether or not I was going to be able to handle uh, him actually like <laughs> throat pieing me, I was like, okay, I don't know if I can do that, but I kind of want to try because people ask for it all the time. And like, how do you know if you can or if you want to until you try, right? Uh, and so I, we had talked about it back and forth. I was like, okay, I don't know if you should. Like, should you? Should you try? Can you even? That was a big Does thing. it feel like, good it, enough that you can? Exactly. Which I had to try really hard. Uh, well, I bet. Yeah. I bet you could feel it. And <laughs> right as it was happening, I was about to make you stop, but I knew that it was getting to be time. So I was so like, that, hey. that's what happened the first time too. Uh huh. I was actually pretty close, but then I felt your body language change. Yeah. I'm like, oh, she can't Shit. take it anymore. Mm -hmm. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like holding my breath the entire time and oh, like man. holding in the gag, but I was like, okay, like just deal with it because I can tell that you're close. But uh, we had discussed like, okay, well, if we can't, then I'll just take like a giant facial because obviously I was covered in my own fucking spit. Like it was so messy. Uh, but yeah, no, you ended up getting to do the the thing deep down there. We haven't, yeah, we haven't even looked at, looked at it I back haven't yet, seen the video yet. Hopefully... Hopefully it's good. I feel like it's good. So I guess again, sometimes stuff like that really turns me off. Like when I see it I randomly know. on Twitter or something, I'm like, oh, it's a little too hard no, for my eyes. So it's yeah. gonna be funny watching us back and wondering <laughs> if we're gonna feel the same thing. But because it's us, it might not feel that way. I was gonna say it's, it will know if when you're editing you get a boner I cringe or not. Or something, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But usually, if you're editing our porn, you have a hard on. But like, I feel like you're gonna edit this and you're just I gonna be see. sitting there oh, like. Yeah. I think it's because it's us doing it true it's okay <laughs> yeah. it's funny uh and like i know that you don't like sloppy stuff too so when i bring up like wanting to do these scenes we're both kind of like I mean, so we're we throat fucking to, today we have to do it though <laughs> you know, we don't have to but people want it people right? want it and it's like so again it's not like we fucking don't like it or can't do it true so. We're open-minded. Yeah, and we it's nice to have other things to do for videos. You well, know? that's the other thing. Like, putting out free videos every single week. Like, God, you guys, can you can you get any yeah. more creative with your sex? There's only... <laughs> I mean, you know, you guys have sex, right? Yeah, like, <laughs> There's only certain it. things you can do. <laughs> so, <laughs> you get to a point where it kind of hits the ceiling. Yeah, eventually you're just like, fuck it. Like, what do you, what do you guys want to see from me? Okay, fine, I'll do it. But I have to hope it's kind of like this, though, where people that listen to the podcast, they don't care what we talk about. They just like listen to us talk. Right. I'd hope that people on our OnlyFans don't care exactly mm. what we're doing. Yeah. They just like to see us have sex. Yeah. Hopefully. At least, at least those are the people that I want on our page because yeah. they'll stay because they just enjoy us. Yeah. I um, mean, it's it's hard to please everybody. Everybody has different tastes. So we just try to give out a variety of all of it as much as we can. Yeah. Please everybody. Since we're on that topic, a lot of people do ask for anal stuff. I know. And like, we were supposed to film anal today. We were going to try the past couple of days. Yeah. But a lot of people asked for that. And one guy actually asked, like, do you have any, any anal videos? I'm like, the one main one is, is the one that we have. We have one other one. But other than that, that's all. And then they ask. Well, for our page. We have like yes. old shitty. I shouldn't call it shitty. Jesus. Let me take that back. <laughs> we have, I mean, anal shitty. <laughs> that's why I'm taking it back. We have old, like crappy quality anal videos back from the beginning of time when we both looked different and i was using a shitty phone mm -hmm. but like no i'm not gonna post those ones on our page yeah. like our page is way yeah. too high quality for that shit if i did it again damn it anyway um so but, then they asked yeah. um oh is it gonna be in any future videos soon and i literally I had to tell him like I'm hey anal's not that easy there's, there's a huge preparation that we have to do for that it can't just come out so easy like that but then he actually was like hey i totally understand yeah no worries at all which is really nice i want to uh, yeah. i want to guys i talk about this all the time like it's not that easy it's not that easy for me i just literally was reading a whole like well i i got late night man i was up till 2 a.m last night just being fucking dumb james was sleeping i had to take a sleeping pill just to go to sleep but i was like deep diving on the internet because i've been wanting to film anal and going into like all these like gay male like websites and articles and just like explaining all the tips and tricks that they have 
for doing good anal and just just like man it has so much to do with your diet and that's very very hard for me <laughs> like i don't even understand all of it to be honest with you and so yeah like cutting out dairy de- like figuring out the different types of fiber and then like whey protein and stuff like that was a really bad one i haven't been on my protein as much recently but man it's not easy and yeah i went to go like see if it would be a good butt day today and it was just absolutely not so we didn't do that Mm -hmm. i'm i want to but we did film a video though yep we did yeah we did it today in our new bedroom setup. Mm-hmm. First one in the new bedroom. Yeah, with with the art and the walls and the lights. Yep. I've been really proud of that. And it's funny because like no one's... No one's seen it. No one's seen it. So like, oh, I'm so stoked every time I I come to the room and the lights are on. Oh, it just feels so good. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, so it's a really low light video, but not really. So I'm kind of cool. It's kind of cool. I'm, I'm excited to see how that one turns out. I think it's cool. And it's different too. We did like... Um, just like weird sex positions or like weird for us ones that we haven't done that very much of just ones that are hard to get into and do oh yeah we we went for the weird ones stuff that doesn't really happen naturally yeah like just when you're having sex he full-on picked me up and just not even against a wall just boom 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 standing it was great it was lots of fun of course you have very sore legs right now so oh my god i was like oh you want to do the hardest fucking sex positions ever with sore legs let's go it was fun yeah (laughs) and then that's all the filming that we're going to be doing until um our trip because we leave uh Mm -hmm. next week for miami it's been crazy though because those are only um i feel like we haven't filmed in a while well just the two of us yeah because you went to toronto Uh, we just have so much content banked right now that it's been the last one we filmed was probably the ghost face one uh yeah i think you're right yeah which which feels like forever ago but we still have banked stuff with jesse from before i had stuff dakota just went no pay-per-view so she approved us posting our stuff with her and yeah the all the collab stuff from toronto and Mm -hmm. we just had a lot we've had a lot of content which is really nice (laughs) but yeah yeah it was well it's been a while yeah i feel like we've been doing a lot we have been doing a lot in preparation for miami because obviously when we're there we don't want to deal with anything and so we're actually filming this podcast early or like well yeah earlier like a week earlier than we usually would what else did we what else would be doing oh my gosh we've been doing so sometimes we go on like these spurts where we don't do anything social media well i think i don't want to say that that's the reason i think we just did that because we were we were having a hard go at life right i feel like we're getting back in the swing of things again right that's true that's all it really is yeah and just creativity in general like sometimes i really get into like slumps of like just not having it and sometimes I get into slumps where I just don't want to do my makeup. Yep. Period. Uh, so that's really hard. So I've been back on doing my makeup, back on the creativity, and back on wanting to do social media stuff. Uh, and so, yeah, we've been doing some really fun, like, kind of TikToks and reels. And, and uh, today when we were out shopping in Walmart, we did just some stupid fucking, <laughs> some stupid videos in Walmart that I'm actually really excited to post. <laughs> So, yeah. Yeah, we've been doing, I think we've been doing literally everything that you can do. As a content creator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, there may be some styles of content that we're missing, but we literally, mm. like, <laughs> we've done everything. Yeah. Like So, like, you know, today when we're doing um, just those weird, funny skit things, mm-hmm. we, well, we don't usually do those, but like, the last time I can remember us doing something was the cum towel video. Oh, yeah, that was a long right? time ago. That was a long time ago, and then that was basically like, the only one that one that we did that was kind of like that yeah not like, not like that we don't enjoy that i think we do we enjoy do it. enjoy it it's, it's actually hard really to nice think switching of. it up mm-hmm. to be honest um and that one's nice too because like you know the tiktoks are just um mouthing words and stuff like that and you're mm-hmm. it doesn't feel like you're doing it very much but those it, it does feel like we're putting a little bit more effort into it because we're actually talking we have to act up a little bit depending on the case but yeah uh, but yeah we did i think we did three of those today yeah yeah i think so and we had a really hard time. We did a really funny one with like the Christmas in the Christmas section. And uh, oh, my God. oh my fucking God. I don't know how people film in public without being like embarrassed. <laughs> I, I think there's always a little bit there unless you really just don't care. Oh my God. Like I was dying on the inside. We're trying to and we're not even doing anything that stupid. We're just like filming each other and talking to the camera. <laughs> we're not even being dumb, you no. know, like we're just. <laughs> and it's like, just be- different when it's in public. We people do- would walk by and we're both just like. Ah. Yeah. yeah pause but, but then everyone would stare like there was this older uh, when we we're getting to the end of that last scene for the ornaments one yeah uh there's that 
there's the two older ladies that were right there just yeah. staring and smiling at you and i think they were talking about your tattoos and no your she complimented that... me after oh okay when you were putting the ornaments away there we go i knew uh, it but she was just staring at you smiling the whole time because like you know they you also were... smelled so strong of weed oh, yeah. what did they they were so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you're in your short shorts and dude, a short I was dressed top, like such a slut. And you had your tattoos and everything. So it's just yeah. I was dressed like a slut because I was I just got like a package from uh Nowhere Fast, uh the brand, which um you guys will see shortly because I'm gonna be posting all those photos and stuff like that. But I just got their package. Uh and so I was wearing their outfits. We did a photo oh, that's the other thing we did today. Yep. Holy fuck. We did a photo shoot. Uh which in, has been a while too. Yeah. It, we did a photo shoot in all the clothes that I got from them. So hopefully we'll have that edited and posted. And so I wanted to, I was going to wear that outfit out because it's super cute. And, you know, thirst trappy uh, into Walmart. Well, fuck. I am not used to looking hot in public. I'll tell you what. It's, that's a lot. <laughs> I like looking like a bum <laughs> when we're in public. Yeah, those photos actually, I really enjoyed those photos. That was a cool spot that we randomly found. Yeah, it was actually really fucking awesome. I'm actually excited to edit some of them. Uh huh. Which is just funny because like, again, we just did so much. We have so much to edit. We did so much that it, uh, it's hard to even explain how it feels. But I, 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 I think I can only explain it like I was saying earlier, how we're getting that creativity back or we're, yeah. we're getting more out of the slump. But man, doing all the things that we did recently, it really made things feel fun again. I, I agree. Um, but it wasn't fun until you were, until I was doing it. Like the photo shoot, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm down to do a photo shoot. But then we got to the location and then the sun was hitting different ways. I'm like, oh, this is, this is fun. It's because all these tasks like kind of seem daunting. Until I mean, that's you're true doing too, it. especially because of the list that we have is so long. Yeah. Um, Even when I think about creating reels, I'm like, oh, fuck, that's so daunting. But then you actually have good ideas. Yeah. And then it's fun. Yeah. That was one thing I was talking to my therapist about was, Man, like lots of our work uh, obviously is creative, mm -hmm. but lots of it is just like numbers or backdoor shit. Sure. Just data shit, yeah. website shit. And I feel like we've been doing lots of that stuff for a bit. Yeah. Like, because the only thing we were doing was for a while was just the podcast. So we're yeah. just sitting behind the computer editing the podcast clips. And that, let's be, let's face it, there's not much creativity there, right? No. But then when I started uh, exporting the, the the last podcast and i started doing the thumbnail and seeing like oh this is kind of fun even i've done the thumbnails a thousand times yeah. but the, because it's a little more creative just a little bit and yeah. the way i create i'm like this is kind of fun and then i realize i am a creative and i enjoy things a lot more when i am being creative mm -hmm. um so it was, yeah it was nice just to bust out the camera do a shoot for you and be like whoa this is this is turning into something kind of cool right but i'm excited to edit it again so it's it's been really nice doing all the things even that walmart fucking hearing shouting kids and trying to film yeah that was fun it was a little harder but it was still fun <laughs> it was fun i think yeah. that's more fun than just like lip syncing i agree, the TikTok trends. I agree. even when they posted today with the with the belt i know it already, it already stupid, has so much personality to it already you know so yeah tiktok it's... ones do do good though sometimes yeah yeah, yeah. anyway we've been busy and now we're gonna have a lot of editing to do but that's okay because the point was to get done all the things that we needed to do filming wise today today well by today yeah, yeah and which we have accomplished and then yeah. we're gonna have the next couple days to like Just get all the ducks edit. in a row edit have everything sorted scheduled yeah 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 so we're excited about that very much i thought there was something else oh we also take like photos with each other just to post on our wall and only fans sometimes or just in general uh, where you set up the camera and you t put the auto oh okay yeah 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 yeah, yeah. i have an app that just like lets it go beep 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 and take pictures takes photos for you it's so you great. don't have to press the button or whatever and you know sometimes we do those safe for work sometimes not safe for work sometimes we do this right on it for our only fans so uh, it's been a while since we even did that and that was the first thing we kind of did that day mm -hmm. And instantly when you, after like the first, fourth or fifth one, I'm like, oh, I love you. And we <laughs> hugged you. We even got that on camera. Yeah, it was so cute. Because like, it, man, because like, I think maybe that's the reason why I had that moment was when we finally rebranded as Family Standards. Oh, yeah. And I had to show face more. We had to advertise us as a couple. Mm. I think that was one of the first things we really did was, all right, we'll take photos with each other. Yeah. And we we used that. to do photos a lot. And we used to do those a lot. Every time we'd film, we would do those mm -hmm. photos. But we always haven't been filming either. Yeah. So when we did it the, uh, yesterday, I'm like, it kind of like sunk me, gave me a little bit of nostalgia, <laughs> you know? That's was, true. That was good. That's true. Yeah. 
Oh, there was something else I wanted to bring up because I mentioned the outfit that I was wearing today. Guys, I don't want to flex, but like I'm also kind of good at flex for a second. I have some really cool things happening recently. And if you don't mind, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to tell you about them. Because like, obviously I know that with like big following comes... I don't even want to say a social media influencer like this, but bleh, even that makes me want to, eh, I don't like it. I know that when people get big followings, companies tend to reach out for brand deals or promo or whatever the fuck. I've never really understood how all that stuff works. Never really been interested in it because I don't like to be a fake bitch. But also, uh, we get flooded with fake DMs all the time. All the time and I used to fall like for a couple of them too. For sure. It gets to the point where you're just like, fuck this. It's not worth it. But you know it's not real. Well, you know... They had the same layout. Yeah. But this one, you know. Yeah. Well, there's been a couple things that have happened. So um, I don't know if you guys saw, but like the craziest one that ever happened was the the tattoo that I just got on my inner thigh. So basically what had happened is I had gotten DM'd on Instagram from a tattoo artist. He had just come from Russia. Yeah. Into Canada and was kind of in my vicinity. And he reached out to me, said he loved my style, would love to collaborate with me and basically put a tattoo on me if I'm down to let him take pictures, have a videographer there and just like share the content that he makes basically. And and I thought that was a lie. Like I was like, this has got to be fake. Ended up talking to him back and forth and he seemed really, really nice. And yeah, we collaborated on this concept of the succubus and it turned out fucking phenomenal. I can't believe <laughs> that out of all the things in life, like you guys know, I'm a tattoo head. Like I love tattoos. I can't believe I got a free tattoo and how cool it is. And like, it's probably the best tattoo on my body. I'm not going to lie. Uh, so that was really crazy. Like really, really crazy. I didn't pay. And like, he didn't ask anything really of me other than give me the space. Let me take pictures and videos and post it. Share the content that I post. He didn't even ask me to post it myself. He didn't ask me to make any reels. He didn't ask me to post them on my stories. And he didn't ask me to make any posts about him at all. And because he didn't ask me, and because I had a good time, actually, I want to. And so I've been promoting the shit out of him because I had a great experience. And so that's that's the kind of shit that I like. And so, yeah, I have this um, Nowhere Fast is owned by Angela. I can't remember her last name right now. They had reached out wanting to send me some clothes. And I was like, yeah, for sure. And same thing. All they want is a couple cool photos of me wearing it, and it's super fucking cute. So, of course, I'm going to do that. And then, yeah, I have actually a meeting tomorrow. It's an online meeting, but with a uh, local company that does, like, cosmetic laser procedures, which I have been desperately wanting to get done. I've been struggling with my acne and, like, acne scars and aging and all that shit. And so, yeah, same thing. She's like, oh, you know, let's set up a meeting for tomorrow. So, I'm excited to see how that goes potentially get my skin treated which would be really cool so anyway we also had that caged company oh yeah as well yeah the leather the leather yeah. bat uh bralette that you guys saw me wearing that was really cool yeah. and she was so dope she was so understanding she's like i know you don't like to do promo yeah but can i send you this and if you love it will you post about it and i did love it of course i loved it and so i did post about it that's what i like if they if they give me the rights to be honest And that's what I always tell the people too. Actually, I should have, um, there's another really lovely gal that's reached out to me. Uh, She has her own like fitness company. She's asked to send me some of her supplements. Mm. And she's like, post them if you love them. Yeah. I think all of these brand deals, whatever you want to call it. Sure. uh, All had in common was it was really mellow. It was super chill. You know, it didn't feel like business, Mm -hmm. but it was. I felt like, you know, friends trying to help friends out more than anything. Yeah. Well, and that's how I look at it for sure. Exactly. Totally. Like I always shout out if I get, if I'm getting a tattoo done, I'll always post when I'm in their chair, who the artist is. Like as long as I have a good experience with them, like I don't see why I wouldn't do that. But when I do look it up online, people that have big followings charge upwards of like five, $10,000 for like reels and stuff like that. Yeah. It's crazy. Mm Mm-hmm. I just don't, I don't personally see the value in that, but maybe that's because I have the page and I know that that's not really worth that much, in my opinion anyway, unless you're guaranteed like followers or guaranteed gains or I don't know, you never know what's going to blow up and what's not. But anyway. But, but that's the thing, lots of people that don't have big followings and your business 
right? You have over 100K followers on a, on a social media platform. To them, that's a lot. Right. So either way, they probably feel like this has to gain me something, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. It's hard to put in numbers, obviously, but... Yeah. It's really hard for me to, like, value myself and what we have as... Of course. S- something worth... Like, I, I just feel everyone, bad. everyone that's where we're at... Yeah. ...feels the exact same way. Yeah. We don't... It doesn't really feel like that at all. But then those people that obviously take advantage... Totally. ...of it, they get big. They blow up on the internet and then they just take advantage of it. Yeah. There's obviously those people, too, but... I just, like, value everyone's time so much. Like, even the... The leather harness that we that she gave us i was like oh my god like i posted it way more than she wanted me to because i was you like liked it i know i did like it and but i it was like a homemade just, box she o- you opened it she wrote a letter said it to you and She's me like, so much love and care put into yep, things exactly. and like same with andy like he spent three days tattooing me three whole days um and, and that one didn't actually start on a good note either no yeah and that turned out to be amazing well actually yeah i I guess he spent four days technically because the first day we were supposed to start we didn't end up starting because we actually like weren't set on the design on the first day so he wanted to like redraw it and then we started the next day it's basically four whole days he didn't have clients just working on me so i'm just like wow like that's i just value people's time so much so if you guys like my tattoo and you've seen the reels that i've posted would love you to uh Go hype him up because he's a really cool dude. Deserves it. <laughs> yeah, we just need like a sex toy brand now. Brand Dang, new. I've been talking about that a lot. Like that I, would make the most sense. I only really order from Pink Cherry, but I don't think we're ever going to get that from them. Pink Cherry. Well, I'm Pink Cherry. I've tagged them in some stuff before and they've, they've seen it and they just, they don't answer. It's just, it's just because like out of all the things that we get asked, I mean, there's so many things we get asked. <laughs> But we talk about sex toys a lot. People always ask, where where do you get it? I know. What's your website? And you, you do say Pink Cherry all the time. Yeah. So it'd be nice to be like, hey, There's use been, this promo code. We have some other companies that have reached out before, but none yeah, of them really nothing, seem like worth it. No, I know. Yeah, for sure. I'm like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to collaborate with somebody who's charging $200 for the same sex toy I can get from a place for 40. <laughs> like, that just seems crazy. Like, I don't know. I don't care that you're a small business. If it's literally the same product. No, I, like I can't. I can't tell people to go buy from a company that charges that much more money. Like, yeah. why? You can just get it on Pink Cherry. I know. But again, you get everything on Pink Cherry. So that's the reason why. Not <laughs> sponsored, by the way. Not, not sponsored. Not sponsored, but get would love it if it was. <laughs> For fuck's <laughs> sakes. Man. Oh, um, we had a fucking podcast clip go viral finally. Not finally. Well, it's been a while. It's been a long time since we've yeah. hit a mil views. Usually we get like those videos when we have guests on the show. Yeah. But of course, right? Like, yeah. of course, that's the case. When it's just us, it never goes like crazy viral. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I was surprised. It was the clip about my pussy buffet, if you guys remember from our last our last episode. Uh, yeah, that got a lot of attention. Some good, some bad, a whole lot of everything lot of entitled people in those comments you know that's how you know a video a video goes viral because when it starts getting hate when yeah you get way more hate than you usually do like, yeah because oh. that means it hits the for you page not yeah. just your followers yeah so yeah the more hate you get the more you know that that, that piece of content went viral so much hate you guys <laughs> yeah the biggest one on that one was people talking about like stds and stuff oh which, my gosh fair enough fair enough like, even one person that asked was like Hey, just a serious question here. Like, do you know everyone's um, STD history or status before you do these things? And yeah. you reply right away, like, uh, yes, we actually get all get full panel screenings before we do all these things together, before we even lay a finger on each other. Yeah. Then I reply as well, being like, that's a, basically a prerequisite for us. Yeah. We don't work with you unless we don't. And then she made a valid point when she replied. She said, oh, I didn't really know that this was your industry. I don't even know right. what your industry is. She thought it was more of just a girl, you talking about a little fun that you had and if you filled your fantasy she just saw a podcast clip and had no idea that we did sex apparently and all <laughs> yeah. she could see was a girl talking about her fantasy about eating everyone's pussies yeah which is fair which right? is fair. That's fair yeah well there, there was that and then of course like i always we always answer like all the steps and precautions that we take because we just think it's really good to spread awareness about how we go about doing these things but then of course we have some people in the comments that are like <laughs> You can tell that they're butt hurt that I've just exposed the fact that I didn't just see these hot girls for the first time ever and just like 
ravish them right away. Like they're mad that we <laughs> that we sat down and actually had to like discuss and look at paperwork prior to having sex. Like oh, it, they just don't believe that we actually even did that. Well, that Someone too. That even. But there are some people that are mad that I've gotten rid of the fantasy. It's ridiculous. I took away the fantasy because I'm talking about real life shit. But then, yes, there's people that don't believe that we're actually being tested. It's like, I don't understand why that's so hard to believe. Yeah. It's our job. <laughs> like Maybe it's because they just can't believe that. You know, normies can't even fathom them doing that. Like them actually having sex for work. So they're not thinking, they're not thinking in our realm, which right. fair. But the one worst comment was, oh, like, good luck with STDs. Like, dude, are you not reading the fucking comments? Oh, I did read the comments. Everyone would agree with me. You're not reading the not fucking reading. comments then. And then you tell him that what we do is what we do for work. And we, of course we get tested, blah, 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 blah. Then he's, and then he's like, oh yeah, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. Still have your STDs. Like just these simpleton minded people just in their own minds, not giving a fuck. Like they can't. can't Coming from a man that's people. probably never, ever been STD checked in his whole yeah, fucking it's life. Just, there's no point sometimes, you know, but sometimes <laughs> I get angry too. I'm just like, cause these people just don't. They, they won't take no for an answer. Okay, but there is a point. You got to keep them going because that's why I know, reached a I know, mill. I know, I know. Because we were just that's fucking. That's basically the reason. But still, it's still fucking annoying. We were man. in it stirring the fucking pot the whole time. It was sitting at like, it wasn't even that high. It was at 60,000. And then oh, all of a sudden it, it was like, like yeah, 200,000. No, a few days later. A few, it was a few it days It took a couple later. days and we're just constantly we're like commenting back and putting spicy things in there. It was great. Uh, I think it's still climbing, but it's slowed down now a lot. But um Oh, and then there was the one comment that um, it was like a nurse or something. And and he was like, yeah, good for you. Like you get STD checked, blah, blah, blah. But uh, you know that they don't screen for herpes or warts and like listed all the things. And I was like, yes, thank you. I'm aware. I'm very aware. Thank you. I understand that you were a nurse and you were aware, but so am I because it's my job and it's my body and it's my health. So yes, no, actually we know what all those things look like. We talk about all those things with other people, past exposure, if if you've been exposed, if you have it in your blood, if you know or not, if you've gotten cold sores or not, we literally talk about all the things. <laughs> the best comment that you said back was, we even look at it. Like we even look at we each other. We even look with our, own, with eyeballs our own eyeballs at each other's mouths and genitals <laughs> before touching them. We use our own eyeballs to look. <laughs> we do. How crazy. Man, it's not weird though, because when you do this and it's so normal, you literally just meet each other, hang out, boom, all of a sudden you're naked, boom, all of a sudden show you're paperwork. inspecting, yeah, oh yeah, show, show, paperwork. show paperwork, boom, all of a sudden you're, you're naked, you're, you're inspecting each other's genitals and then you're making out and then yeah. you're, and then you're doing the thing. Yeah. It's very normal for us. It's like literally some people's one year relationship with someone in a matter of a day. Yeah. Realistically. So think how fast you are getting to know this person yeah because like there were times where i'd feel very scared or insecure sure. being naked in front of a girl for the first time yeah or something like that in my younger years i mean even to my adult years and it wasn't until i got into this industry where i was like you know you meet so many people in the industry and then you learn real quickly like dakota was a prime example for that oh yeah gets in the room hey is like can i get naked now are we ready yep gets, gets naked i'm like but to be fair, that's gonna happen it's eventually. It's gonna happen anyway. And if so, that's how you're more comfortable, then... Yeah, so just strip down now, you know? Yeah. And I know I felt that way with some people that we've worked with, like, even after filming with them, being like, well, they've seen my dick already. Yeah, do I put my clothes back on they, for the 30 minutes? If they don't care, is it really that big of a deal? I'm just like, no, no it's It's like not. once we all get naked, we're naked yeah, for the rest of like, eternity together. Th there's nothing left to hide. That's why we have such good friends. I think so. Which sounds crazy. <laughs> But it's just like, there's <laughs> nothing left to hide. Yep. It's all out on the table. You're yep. so vulnerable. Yep. You see them for them completely. It's it's crazy to explain to people because it, it won't make sense until you've done yeah, it. No, it really won't. But literally the friendships we've made since doing this, it's baffling. And how many friends that I actually feel like I know them now. I've never had that. I know people. It's like what it's wild i don't want to say it's just because of sex but it's just it's just the openness that comes with being in the industry in general yeah. so yeah yeah it's something else really 
I love it. I'm very grateful. Oh, Zoe had ended up messaging me yesterday, hyping us up about her podcast clip that went viral. And then she just along the lines of saying like, holy shit, man, people are horrific to sex workers. Makes my heart ache. Hope you guys are doing okay. But at least those people are making you go viral kind of thing. And I had just said, uh, yeah, it's wild. But hey, we're not mad. Some people just don't know any better. They don't know what they're missing out on. They shame us because they feel shame themselves. I pity the fools that will die never truly living for themselves. And that's the truth. I don't mean that about everybody and I don't want you guys to take offense to that, but there's so many people that don't live for themselves. Because if you lived for yourself, you wouldn't feel shame and you wouldn't need to make other people feel shame. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So anyway, I pity the fools. I'm not mad that people are mad at me. People are mad at me because they're never going to live the way I live. And, and they might not even want to because they ha just have it so engraved in their brains that they have to live a certain way because society says so. And that's totally fine. But like we 100% just live for ourselves. I do what I want to do. I don't have anybody that I care about their opinions. I don't care if you don't like me. I don't care if you shame me. Like, and I don't feel ashamed, which is literally why we can sit on this podcast and say everything and anything without thinking, oh my God, I can't believe I just said that out loud to the world. I don't give a fuck. So anyway, that's my two cents on that. You said something earlier about you don't want to, uh, anyone to take offense to that. But yeah. I think if you're listening to this podcast, you wouldn't take offense to that. Because if you're listening to this podcast, you are not that type of person anyways. That's true. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, it's really cool that you're talking about this. I don't even know how to like categorize this, but... You know, this type of conversation is getting into a territory of like philosophy in sure. a way, which is something that you don't typically like talk about, which is really cool because I would hundred percent agree with you. Mm. All these people commenting mean things, th their view of the world is so limited. They can't even understand what we do. And they never will. Mm -hmm. And like you said, they think they're living a happy life where they're at because their vision of the world is so small. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They don't even know what's out there, which is basically what we're, what you're saying. Yeah. So it's like you said, I feel bad for them that they don't even get to live a fulfilled life or to what they, it's hard because they don't even understand. They might feel fulfilled. And that's the thing. Yeah, I'm not yeah, exactly. saying that their life isn't fulfilling. I'm just saying. I mean, like, even that from our perspective, though, that's not a fulfilled life. No, what for, they're living. No, but like, I don't. It's just, yeah. Yeah, it's sad more than anything. Like, and we don't feel any ways about it. But I understand how some people might. Oh, like, I completely understand yeah. when people say they don't like us or don't respect what we do. I'm like, that is completely fine because you were raised not to. So. But the thing is, so are we, right? Yeah due to whatever life experiences that we've had, that we've decided to take, we decided to open up our minds to other things, other possible things, instead of being sheltered underneath it. Mm -hmm. But obviously some people are born into the world just being more open in general. But, you know, I, I'd say we were, or I'd say me especially more than anything, was way closed-minded in my younger years, for sure, mm -hmm. until I really started learning more about the world and thinking more about there's different things in life and now we're here doing sex for work yeah <laughs> and sh telling the whole world about it yeah you know but what i was saying before is uh some people in our shoes might have a hard time with all the hate was what i was trying to say as well mm. right some people that might not have that tough of an exterior right might let those words get the best of them i'm just yeah. happy we're not typically those people right mm -hmm. i feel like we have some questions kind of along this this topic but um it's kind of something along the lines of how i just feel like you and I both are very similar in this certain type of way, which is kind of just basically not giving a fuck yeah. about other people, really. Other people's opinions. In certain, yeah, in in certain, certain ways. ways yeah. In certain things. Caring about people for sure. But like oh, we, we don't, care deeply about people we're not really about. trying to impress other people necessarily. No. And also you and I are both the same when it comes to things like not caring about things that a lot of the world does care about. Yep. We don't idolize people. We'd literally live for ourselves. Exactly. Yep. I'm not listening or researching other people's lives. I, we don't care about reality TV. We don't care about famous people. All of that kind of stuff. It's a lot of people's lives. 
Yep. For a lot of people, but it has no relevance for us. So I agree with you. It's definitely a where are you at in life type of thing. Okay. Because I think the only reason why we are more cemented in how we view the world like that is because we're actually doing something that's important to us. Mm, we don't have time to kill. A lot of people are just sheep out there. Mm. So of course you're going to get, you feel like you're, you know, you're going to your nine to five job or whatever, right? You're living, you're living your life. And you just get consumed by the social media or the world at, at its present day. You just get sucked in. But I think if you have a purpose in life, your meaning of life or what you pursue in in life, if you have a really strong affinity towards that, I think naturally your brain starts thinking in that way anyways. I think it does. Mm. I think the deeper we got into this together, especially has kept created that lifestyle for sure. Mm -hmm. And obviously when you're married with someone, you know, like things start kind of linking together, you know, thoughts, right. personalities, right? We kind of form a new one. Luckily we've been going in a good direction. So we've been building something really cool instead of like, right. you know, not. Yeah. But even, um, like, even if, if you and I were walking down the street and we saw like a famous actor that we oh, yeah. both liked. We talked about this. I know that we would act the same. Yeah. Neither of us are the type of people that would like fan boy or girl mm -hmm. over someone. Now, do you think a reason of that is because, and I hate, I know we hate saying it, but do you think the reason is that because we felt some sort of fame and now we understand what it's like? So we won't we kind of understand the situation more maybe but also i don't think so i agree with you because even before all this even i could say the same thing you could say the same, same thing, thing right yeah but it's now especially like now i just put myself in their shoes more and almost yeah. want to respect their space more yeah, 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 yeah but yeah. i still never even before this would have been like oh my god yep same like, me too me amanda too. seyfried is my favorite actress if i saw her walking down the street i'd be like oh cool that's amanda seyfried but i wouldn't I come I up to her i love you as an actress I probably wouldn't even say anything. Okay. I would just let her be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would let everybody just be, unless they seemed like they wanted to be approached. Unless but you like, were at some type of event that you were just there cool. with each other. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But like, yeah, no, it's it's very interesting. We get these questions asked all the time of like, if you could have one last meal with three famous people, who would you choose? I don't fucking, I literally don't know because I just don't think that way. So I don't know how I got this off topic, but um, nothing's off topic here. Yeah, it's just, I just feel want. like we're very similar in those kind of ways. Yeah, I, I agree. And so, yeah, I don't know if we're just like a specific type of person. I'd love to have a like a behavioral analyst come in here <laughs> and analyze us. But I just think, again, once you find a, a purpose in your own life and you, you find your passions and you really strive a lot, and that's a big thing too, I think. Lots of people don't really put in the work. Or they give up early mm. and once you actually put in the work and what you put in ends up returning back to you tenfolds yeah that's true but once you start feeling that i don't know matt you, i mean in a way you you value what you do mm -hmm. and then you don't feel like yeah you're not comparing yourself to other people i'm you, just comparing myself to myself yeah i'm just exactly. competing my with myself that's it yeah so, it's yeah. honestly weird to even like think about life another way because I've stopped by at my old workplace so much recently, I've actually really thought about this, uh, especially recently, like today, we were there shooting really close today. I was like, I was doing that for five years. Mm -hmm. That's a decent amount of time. You know, I'm approaching 30. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is though, when I started massage therapy college, I met a lot of interesting people in class. Some people in their 30s transitioning into massage yeah leaving their past industry right mm -hmm. whatever the industry was and then you know you're you, you go to school with all these people tr doing the same thing massage and i think back now present day those people looking at us being like wow i can't believe they're not doing massage anymore like i'm you know but yeah. at the same time you're you transi transitioning into massage is the same thing as me leaving massage and transitioning to this yeah it's no different really I just love this way more. And I feel like I finally found what we enjoy, you know? Um, and I think that's everyone's cool, to be honest. Yes. They preached about that a lot on the podcast I was listening to today. Just basically saying, like, don't seek a job just for money. Do something that you love. And if you love it enough, you'll make yourself be successful and the money will come after. Yeah. And I think that's what everyone says, right? Mm -hmm. Like, if you have fun in your job, are you even working type of thing? But I think 
and the the reality is that's a lot harder to that's a lot harder to grasp like like finding a job that you actually enjoy that will give you lots of money i mean I, in my opinion though you don't even need lots of money you just need enough to be able to live right well and if you love your job enough you'll make your lifestyle fit however correct. much money correct, you end correct. up making with it but hopefully it can make anything right yeah. like what if your favorite job is fucking fishing right <laughs> Well, it's hard freak making that, that guy that just got I know, that YouTube I know, right? shout out. Ooh, but that's what I mean, though, right? Like, I think the reality of taking your passion and turning a job is a lot harder than it can be. But, um, yeah, it's hard to say. I feel like we got really lucky. I don't like to say we got lucky because we work fucking hard. I mean, we work so. fucking hard, but there's some luck to this. Really? How did, yeah. How did you and I meet at all to begin with when we weren't looking for a relationship at all? That's not luck. We, we met each other. We went to the same college. Yeah. That was, that's pretty lucky that we went ran into the same college and this is what created all of this. Okay. You know what I mean? Sure. What if you didn't go to college or what if I didn't college? We never met. I mean, we were living in the same city for crying out loud. And that was the first time we ever saw each other. We weren't living in the same city. But yeah, but pretty we much, right? 40 minutes apart. That's still, not. Still. <laughs> I just told Jesse Switch the whole story. Uh, I, I've talked about it before on here, just how I almost didn't go to, didn't get to go to college because I technically had been yep. arrested and all that crazy shit. Mm -hmm. I just told her about that, and she was like, "Holy shit! Like that's quite the story." And so isn't that kind of lucky? And then that I remembered, yeah, I almost didn't get to go to college. I almost, and I almost didn't go to college that year either because I just broke off my ex, and I literally couldn't afford it because I was living mm -hmm. rent free. That was the whole reason why I decided to go to college. I was even thinking about backing out. Dang. Like lots of things could have happened. That's but true. we still lined up. That's true. All right, fine. So there's some, there's some, there's some luck to life for sure. What I 100 percent think that, but I also believe it's you just know, meant to be. The effort that you put out there does come back to you. So, mm. but luck does play a part, in my opinion. Hmm. Yeah, I, I like to believe in luck because luck is like the one of the coolest concepts because you technically have no control of it. Sometimes you're lucky and sometimes you you're not. You hate luck games though. It kind it's fine though because like when i have bad luck i know eventually it will turn to good luck luck comes and flows so if i'm on a bad streak i'm like whatever i'm on a bad streak i'll have to get lucky eventually i haven't hit it in a while though. so it's so funny once it comes it should it should hit strong guys I, I love the way this guy speaks when we edit the podcast after i'm always like i love how you enunciate sometimes what did i just say now <laughs> i don't want to watch it back oh god <laughs> I love it. Hey, it's important. That's how you keep people intrigued. I see, like, the stuff that he just does. Like, <laughs> know I know you did that on purpose, but when you, when you do it, sometimes you don't even realize. I'm just like, oh. Yeah, it's, well, it's, it's something you can work on, but it's in my, it's just in me now. Also, just like, you know, when you hang out with a certain crowd of people forever, again, like each other, you kind of start having the same habits and stuff like that. And um, lots of, well, lots of the way I speak, sometimes I can think back, and that was because of my era of living with, the with boys. The boys. That's fair. Because we had the stupidest you banter. Guys were so stupid. And I swear, some of them were truly autistic. <laughs> <laughs> so they just. Speak. There was a variety of things amongst the boys. There was. There was a variety. There was a variety. The boys were a variety. Oh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, the way some of them speak, and even co even um, comics do it a lot too, and which I understand that's. That's mostly where it comes from. So that when you deliver the punchline, it actually hits. Uh. So, yeah, it's fun. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying I'm not, I I'm love not you. Saying, I'm not, no, I'm not saying that at all. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> He's so, I can't. I can't handle it. Even that. <sighs> I'm obsessed. You're so funny. All right. That's been that's been really fun though having you edit the podcast. I know. With with me, it's, I agree. Sometimes I think about just like still doing it on my own because sometimes I feel like we could be better off sp splitting our uh, mental and physical yeah. efforts into different tasks. I know. And sometimes I feel like I I could just edit the podcast myself, and when I find a good topic, I could just time stamp it myself. But honestly, when you're behind my shoulder time stamping everything, I can literally just list, focus on the listening, focus on the gaps, focus on the edits. It it really. I feel like it does streamline things a little Don't bit. Don't take for granted how stressed you were at that time. Yeah, I know. And how much less you are now. Yeah. Because you don't have it all on your shoulders, all on your own. I know, I know. So. And, it was, and it's, it's definitely a lot more fun doing it with you. Well, in one, one podcast clip a day, too, like, I'm very strict on the, like, Kate, cut that. Nope, this. Oh, oh and then, boom, it, there it is. So, 
Yeah, we, we've been I doing lots it, of like taking three to six oh uh, minute uh, parts of the videos and clipping it down to a minute. Yeah, it's tough. Sometimes we sit there and I go know over it like I know 10 it's times. Tough. But, uh, that would give me lots of anxiety when I, I was know. doing it by myself sometimes. Just being like, oh my God, this is going to be a big process. It's fine. And we're only doing exactly 14 per episode. Well, which, depending, but yes. Well, yeah, so. Yeah. I think we have a good system. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's daunting, but it's fine. It's yeah. fine. We also, just like... You learning my editing style and coming up with an editing style that works together with both yeah. of us has been a challenge too. But I think we're at a we're at a place of understanding now as well. Sometimes I literally could just be doing shit on your computer if I wasn't so tech stupid. But I look at his computer and I'm like, there's no way I could do that. So <laughs> well, there's one day I want to have you sit down, uh, kind of like how I want you just drive my car. I kind of want you to sit down, take the pilot, and just like I'll I'll show you like the things and stuff but i do you never really you never like say it a lot but i feel it you know especially what when it happens you know when i um i have a portion of the clip where i put both of us on screen and i have to crop it and, and yes. move it and everything like that every time i get to one of those spots i can see that your attention goes away because you know it'll take me a little bit to even do that but sometimes when i'm doing that you'll end up like hugging me or kissing me because i feel like you were i feel like you are appreciating that i can do this yeah especially at the pace that i can do it at and I feel your love and your appreciation <laughs> when I'm editing like a madman. There's no fucking way I could do any of that on my own. <laughs> like, there's no way. James is wild behind the computer. Uh, we make a good team. Yeah. But you could definitely, if somebody was going to be successful on their own for this shit, it would be him, not me. <laughs> no, I would yes? disagree. Okay. Because you have, you have literally the looks, which is the most important thing. <laughs> But then you just hire it out. That's how a lot of people do in the industry, anyways. Unless it's, you meant like own on your own. Sure, own, like, I meant I meant if we had to do it all on our own. Oh, you would be more successful. But sure, I could hire somebody to do what you do. Whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. fine. <laughs> AI these days, for fuck's sakes, which we still have not switched to. I don't know if we ever will. Maybe eventually, if we really get it too overworked. To, every time, like, so they actually talk about this a little bit with when it comes to like like optimizing your system or, or or at least enjoying your system like enjoying your work or enjoying your habits and lots of it was make sure you have a portion of it where you're actually trying to like get better or improve or learn mm -hmm. but like i want to try to try some ai stuff just to see if it will you know improve workflow at all but it feels like the amount of time i have to put into learning that is taking up too much time away from our actual business at, at this moment of time you know what i mean i mean it that's true but it would be time taken but time gotten back down the road. But right? what like, if the, what if like the AI stuff we use or try to learn ends up just like not working at all? You know what I mean? Which is how I feel like as I sit now. Well, but, and because everyone's using it too, I'm like ours is just gonna start looking like everyone else's. Yeah, it's it's, just, it's hard. I mean, obviously and AI can be applied in so many different ways. But we're so precise. That's can, what I mean. Can AI do what we do? I don't but, think but so. We have to spend a day trying. But, but if it gets to the point where we're so busy that we can't, and we don't want to hire somebody else to do it then sure maybe eventually we'll try it but yeah all right guys we're gonna do uh we're gonna end off with a little bit of q a and after the q a we're going to jump right back into some of your guys' sent in emails that uh stories advice whatever it is we're just gonna read it a lot yeah all right were you girls always attracted to females or was it something new you were willing to explore the reason they asked is because the photo that we use is one of you me and zoe oh yeah but um i mean i'm I'm pretty certain I was aware very, very young, definitely. I had some, just some things that happened at a very young age that made me very aware that I was interested in women, so, yeah. Uh, and then for me, like, I think it was what you're saying on the ladder. Was it something you're more willing to explore? I think I'm more there. I think in my younger years, I could always appreciate a good-looking dude. I acknowledge, hey, man, you're a good-looking dude. But it's very few and far in between. Like we talk about it, right? like lots of like the guys that I'm into or whatever. Mm -hmm. There's very few. Yeah. And it's not like I've tried to pursue anything either. So there's very few, and you don't have that like sexual desire for them. Yeah, I I haven't felt any sexual desire for any guys, but I'd be very comfortable if if it happened. You know, like right. I just have to mentally feel it. you'd be comfortable, but you just don't feel that way yet. Yeah, exactly. So. Fair. What is your motto? Is it motto or is motto? Motto? I think it's motto. What's your motto? Na -na. Da -na -da 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 you know the song? No. 
Oh, okay. Uh, I don't have one. Can you say technically sex happens here is your is a motto, or is that just more of a? Oh no, no, I think so. Or um, I think a motto, a motto. Why is that word sounding so funny to me now? It's a motto. A motto. What's the motto? Okay, eh? a short sentence or phrase chosen to in, as encapsulating the beliefs or ideals guiding an individual. Um, Sex happens here. Yeah, I, yeah, I, guess I don't so know. Kind of say that. I don't know. I'd have to really think about that to be honest. Yeah. And I don't. I'd have to brainstorm. I don't have. I have to think a little bit. I don't have it too. in me right now. But I, maybe I'll think about that and we'll try to try to have a motto ready for next one. She is yummy. What's been the best thing you've learned about yourself or about your partner recently? Maybe it's not something I learned recently about myself, but something that I forgot about. And I'm like, oh yeah, is the lack of uh, fun missing in my life in regards to like hobbies and passions and stuff. I'm trying to get back into doing more stuff like that because Amanda and I had a conversation at one point and it kind of brought up that concept of fun. And uh, I reflect back and like uh, I, I realized that I wasn't doing lots of the things I used to enjoy doing on a, on a, for a James level, and that's something we talked about with my therapist a lot too. So, uh, trying to slowly implement those fun things back in my life, and hopefully feeling better, I'm enjoying my time again. So, mm-hmm. what about you? Best. That's hard. I feel like we're learning a lot of things that I don't have like mm-hmm. like necessarily something that's really good. Also, the recently part's kind of hard in regards of about your partner. I know. Because like we've learned a lot of things about each other. But, like, I can't really think of something on the top of my head that I recently learned about you. Well, wow, I'm really drawing a blank here. It's okay. You can skip it. Sorry, I'm trying really hard. It's all good. Is there jealousy or pride watching the other fuck someone else? Jealousy or pride. Interesting way to word that. Like, words of choice. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, yes. To both? Depends. <laughs> yeah, depends. It really depends on the situation and who it is. And yeah. technically, usually for me, it depends on my relationship with the person that it's happening with. You know what I mean? If I really like the person that he's fucking, there's a lot of pride there. If it's somebody that's rubbed me the wrong way, not so much. <laughs> yeah, and I think if that is the case, that probably wouldn't happen, be happening anyways very much. Like For me, same thing. I have to really like the guy yeah. in order to share you. Yep. So it's kind of the same thing. Mm-hmm. That question gets brought up a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, jealousy, jealousy amongst... amongst Well, jealousy in general, but jealousy amongst our work and everything. And Yeah. Or how do you deal with jealousy or whatever? And we talk about that plenty of times on the podcast. But yep. some things I've been thinking about recently w- with that topic in mind was that like, oh my gosh, big stretch. Cutie. Was that like, yeah, I mean, jealousy is a normal is a normal feeling. And, you know, I think a man and I have been deep in our relationship enough to feel these things and talk about these things openly with each other. But for me, the thing that really helps me just keep moving on with our love and our life is the fact that I know if anything happens, if jealousy comes up or, you know, if any of those feelings come up, I know that we have each other and we have each other's back and, and we want this in life. That, that takes me a long way. It really does help me move on with these certain feelings that I may experience. So true. Basically like our love, I I feel our love is so strong. It doesn't really matter. I feel like I can get over anything or not feel anything at all because I'm not worried. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's hard for me because I don't feel like I really have the ability to, I'm not put in those kind of situations, but I also know that I'm completely in control. If I felt jealous or if there was a weird vibe and I wasn't enjoying watching you be with somebody, I would just call it quits. Yep. And I know and I trust that you and whoever it is would be like, Kate, okay, we're done. Yep. You know, and like, why would you sit there in silence? I also, like, I also just feel like, I feel like if that actually, because that's that's never really happened before like no. during a scene where we had to shut this down. Yeah. Was because I think lots of those feelings get felt or dealt with before that even happens. Yeah. You know, if we don't like that person, we don't even we don't even move forward mm-hmm. to be honest. So mm-hmm. it just goes back to like really trusting that person prior to everything. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. How did you make the jump into content creation? How did you decide it was time? Yeah, so we, James and I have been discussing. There's going to be a lot of like repeat questions. Typically, we try not to repeat questions on this podcast, but obviously, it's hard. We've we've done a lot of episodes at this point, and I can't tell you when we talked about it, but I know we've talked about it. Yep, we have. Uh, long story short, it was like COVID that basically kind of made it happen. Although when I was younger, I'm not going to lie, like I always was the kind of girl that rocked Playboy Bunny. 
jewelry and was like a little extra slutty and just liked being the scandalous girl. I always thought porn would be kind of a thing that I would do, to be honest with you. But um, it wasn't until COVID uh, happened. And uh, yeah, I was just on stress leave from work for a couple of weeks and hopped on OnlyFans and started making good money. That was really how it happened, long story short. And then eventually, two years in, I guess, I did it two years with James being faceless. And then two years in, we were like, okay, hey, we're ready. Let's do this together full time. So here we are. Was it really two years? Two years seems like a long time, but maybe it was. Was it not? Maybe one or one and a half. It could be two. Maybe it was closer to one and a half. Yeah, I don't know. One and a half. Probably. Timeline whatever, is a little whatever. iffy, but. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's probably, you know, the creation of lots of only fan babies was through COVID. Yeah. People wanted a better life. Mm-hmm. We were struggling and that was an option. But, but I did always think that I could be for this industry. Yeah, like, even before COVID and before doing the industry, you talked lots about even being like a little um, sh- uh, sugar baby and stuff sugar like baby that. And stuff yeah. like that. People, people reached out to you and, and, and wanted to message you and stuff. So we talked. We it was talked always stuff that I was stuff. interested in. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Do you guys ever want children? No. No. I got one way here. How do you source folks for the podcast? Oh, just vibes. Yeah. We don't really source people. We just let it happen authentically. Yeah. Or if people like follow us and then they they, they like talk to us every every now and then and they really like our stuff and we kind of, the feelings are kind of mutual. Maybe we'll discuss something, but other than yeah. that. Yep. Yeah. Be our friend, man. That's it. Not a question. Just want to say you're beautiful and love to hear your take on things. Thank you. If you were a microorganism, would you rather live under a titty or a butt cheek? Ooh. A titty. I agree. I wouldn't want to be near the toilet all the time. Yeah, true. Plus, tit sweat tastes pretty good. <laughs> Lots of the same questions. Honey. Oh, wow. She's really stuck back there. You guys can't see it. She's contortioned so crazily and she's purring so loud. Okay, so this is a funny one. I want to be amazing at giving a blowjob and I do super enjoy giving them. Any tips or tricks? I don't think we're going to answer this one now. Okay. I think we're going to spend an episode and just like yeah talking because lots of people actually asked for both perspectives yeah i agree um and i I guess it's kind of understandable if you really do want to try to improve and be better and you know i guess we do have lots of experience in that nature we'll try to bring some props i wonder if we can bring in like a fucking banana and a um like a peach like take out the pit in a peach and yeah i wonder if we can do that not get in trouble on youtube (laughs) poutine or hockey What do these people hate Canadians? I don't know. I'm like, those aren't even like comparable things. Those aren't comparable at all. <laughs> Both. You eat the poutine at the fucking hockey game. What <laughs> are you talking go. about? Uh, do you guys get annoyed by your followers sometimes? Well, yeah, of course. I get annoyed by like people constantly, 24-7. Yeah. I, you can like, <laughs> you could say followers as everyone that follows us, but really the only followers I see are the people that comment nice things all the time. Like That's true. Our followers are usually really great. Yeah. Our followers that... At, like the, the few people that I can like remember their name or yeah. their picture or whatever. I'm like, thank you. Appreciate you. Yeah, that's true. I don't think I get annoyed by followers then. Yeah. Well, unless, hmm. No, I just get annoyed by everybody. I'm not going to lie, but our followers are great. <laughs> what state would you like to live in in, in the U.S.? I that's know. a hard one. Man. I, don't I don't know. I'd have to start looking to. up the fucking laws and legislation. Yeah, I don't know anything. So but whack down there, guys. I'm sorry, but it's crazy. I mean, yeah. A place that gives women's their, women their rights. <laughs> I don't fucking know. I don't know anything about the states. I would I would potentially consider it, and I'm not going to lie, but I'd have to be very choosy about where. Yeah, it, it'd be, there'd be a big reason why we'd go down there, you know? So, I don't know. What's your views on issues surrounding body hair expectations for women in porn? 100% we've answered this before. Yeah, we definitely have. 100%. Yeah. We talked a lot about how, like, it sucks that body, that kind of is a thing, but we go into great detail on on i don't even know what episode i don't remember either it was a really big conversation that we had though but also like i don't necessarily think that there is a standard quote unquote in porn because everyone likes everyone everyone likes different things everyone and if you are a special enough kind of creator you can have whatever you want really um yeah i don't even know that like you could say for porn i think just in general there's like that beauty standard but it's becoming less and less. Like, there's a lot of people flaunting all of the things more so recently. And people just hopping on board with it. So, yeah. 
Will you make family standard merchandise? Would love to support <sighs> in that way. I know we will eventually. I it will happen. To. It will happen eventually. We are still need like we still need to do a lot of things. We still need a better logo and like There's a lot of things that we need to get in check before we can even think about avenues like that. Canada Revenue Agency is like the Canada tax people. They are really, really strict on us. And like we just dealt with it so hardcore. I can't even imagine adding like a goods and sales service I mean, tax. You could do it, but right, right it's now just it's just too much for us to think about. That's what I mean. But there's just a lot more things. And like shipping stuff, all of that. It's just a lot. So we would love to. I would love to have merch. Oh We're just not ready. The only merchandise we have right now is stickers, which some of you guys even want those. Like, you know, ask to send those out. We're or sorry. We have um, buttons as well and little keychains, but that, that was mostly for us and our friends. Uh, but we did hand out a, a, a button and a keychain to to Guys, a fan too. If you so. see us, if you see something public, come talk to us because we always have something on us. It's so funny because every once in a while we'll get somebody like DM us after, be like, "Oh, we we like I saw you, but I was too scared to say hi." I'm like, "Guys, say hi. We always have stickers." True. And yeah. it's like an uh, it's like a limited edition thing because you can only get them if you see us in person. person I know. So it's kind of special. We're putting on a show over here. <laughs> All right. That's my boobs. Ow, that's my... Don't. You're going to flash everybody. Could be not. Thank you. Did starting a career in porn help your relationship? Definitely. Yeah, I guess you can say yes. But it's not like our relationship was bad before and no. we needed porn to no. save our relationship. <laughs> it just opened us up to a lot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A lot of things that we like didn't even realize we weren't discussing and that's what i mean about those people living their uh, their sheltered lives of yeah. not even it's not like we knew their, their minds are so limited yeah <laughs> how does how does your boyfriend a uh, husband buddy <laughs> get his hair so perfect all the time Aww. that's nice of you i really As he's wearing a tube that. today but uh yeah James. If you guys don't know, I talked about this before. If I had to choose an insecurity, it'd probably be my hair. Not that it's a huge insecurity, but growing up, it was a, a big one, uh, especially because I felt like my hair was all I got. You know, growing up, I was always the, the hot Asian guy with the hair. I was always with the hair. And I kind of identified as that, which is also why on these episodes, something is on my head. Something is always just on my head. Um <laughs> It's playtime now. Yeah, well, I'm not wearing a bra, and she keeps launching her claw right into my tit, bro. Do the haters get to you? We talked about no. that just earlier. No. No, if anything, they gain. Ow, they gain us. Yeah. Not a question, but love the podcast. Thank y'all. I'm a cat mom of seven. I'd love to hear your favorite cat products and what you feed them. They're precious. <laughs> Yeah, precious, huh? <laughs> Are you seeing this thing? I don't think we'll get Ow. too deep in, into stuff, but like... Ow. Ow. Oh, okay, so I think that one thing that we can talk about a lot is when we got Hoodie, Hoodie actually came with um, these toys and they're springs. And oh, like, yeah. It's funny because you know there's some like, really staple cat toys. <laughs> you know, there's like the fucking stick with the, with the string and there's just some staple ones. And when, when we got Hoodie with the springs, I'm like, the spring is now a staple. Even our other cats love the spring. I think it's the sound of the spring, but also the ability for it to just to fucking fly everywhere. They just chase after it like crazy. I'm trying to make her get her own tail because she's attacking the fuck out of me. <sighs> Dude. There we go. There we go. She's on the tail now. We're good. What is your favorite thing to do together that doesn't involve work? Everything. Yeah, we do everything else together. <laughs> we spend every waking minute together and I love it. Um, we watch lots of animes. Yeah. Shows. It's a, you know like what? Like when eating, eating and watching our shows together is so nice. It's nice because it's like a downtime from yes. our stuff. But at the same time, I know the importance of actually doing stuff too. You know, Oh, like yeah. yeah. We need to actually do stuff as well. And when we do go out for food and stuff too, that's nice. But it's it's extra nice because we actually appreciate it so much because it's not something that we do often. Mm -hmm. It's like the couple times that we've gone on like date nights and like gone to the keg and really went balls to the walls. Like we really enjoy ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mini golfing. Mini golfing is always a fun one. Yeah. Do you ever invite... The gym. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The gym is like... I th missed. I've thought about... No, not even that. I mean, <laughs> it is, but... <laughs> it is, but well, yeah. no, like I think about... I've been reading this book called Atomic Habits by James Clear, I think is his name. And like lots of an example habit that he uses a lot is 
I want to get more fit. I want to start going to the gym and how create how to create that as a habit. And it's not it's it's like in our system now. We don't even oh, have yeah, to, you don't even habit. have to think about doing. Guys, we took the day off today. And no, we took the day off today. Crazy. Even you were saying like this feels illegal or something. It is you, illegal. You something it like is that. illegal. But you know, like I we've been at it for so long. Every day. It's that just part it's of just, the day. It's just it's just part of it now. So, but we do enjoy that together. Do you ever invite women to do content that don't have a platform? It's funny that you say this or ask this because like we've, you had that on the last episode with Zoe. I just went on a big rant about this We went on a big rant about this. Yeah. Um, No. No. (laughs) No. And it's not about you needing necessarily like a platform or following. It's not about that. It's just you need to be a professional in the industry. Yes. Period. That's it. And if you're wondering why, go listen to the one that we ranted about it with Zoe because we went into it pretty deep. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no. Also, like why? What's it going to benefit me? Why would I want to? Oh, this is a great question to follow up. What do you do when seasonal depression hits? Extra points if it's not working out. <laughs> <laughs> you know us too well. <laughs> um, I mean, we're just, we go to the ski hill all the time. That's like number one. Number one is the ski hill for sure. Yeah. And like the nice thing about the ski hill is because it's so high up, it gets above like the gloomy weather that's down here. Yeah, we get mad gloomy weather. We get no sun in no the entirety sun. of winter and the yeah. days are so short, so... If we go up in the mountain, at least we get some sunshine. And it's, it's just, we get, we're, we're in nature, you know, being, and a, being yeah. in nature is always really good. Even if it's snowy and cold, it's still really good. Yeah. And then you're doing an activity and you're, you're doing something that, you know, like uh, puts you in the zone and the flow and it just feels great. We were just watching videos last year of, of us. James and I were going into like the craziest, deepest fucking powder oh, and we were yeah. just being stupid. We were just doing like drops and I'm uh, videoing and I'm like, oh, he, he, giggling yeah, and James is so fucking somersaulting through the snow. Like we just have so much fun together. You know what? Since we're talking about now, I'm going to say it out loud. I wasn't going to tell you because you know what this stuff I don't like just telling you. I was thinking, I am going to. I'm going to send a backflip this season. Shit. I'm literally going to do it. A hundred percent. The one buddy that I told you that we met recently at the rave, I told you he skis really hard. He sent, he posted a video of a story of him doing a backflip. So I asked him, Hey man, how hard is it? Like I can already do it flat and on trampoline. Yeah. He's like, dude, you got it. You so got it. I think I'm just going to, once if, if I can find a good spot for it, I'm going to huck a backflip this season. Mm, you're fucking crazy. <laughs> Turns 30, hucks a backflip on skis. <laughs> Do it on the ground, man. Come on. Like, you know? That's how, that, that's how you know you're, you're aging well. Um, with grace. If you two could have a threesome with any anime character come to life, who would it be? Ooh. Any anime character. I gotta think for this for a while. And we'd have to agree on one. Girl or guy. Let's say that right now first. Oh, it'd be nice if we could do one of each. Okay, let's do one of each. Okay, female. Let's go through... There's nobody from Naruto that I care about, so let's skip that. I'm stuck on Demon Slayer a little bit. I was going to say probably, Demon Slayer. Probably Mitsuri or something like that because... I mean, she's hot and she's got those tits. And then also limited on females that are characters that we know together. Mm. Like I, need, I can't think of my other animes that I watch. Shit, who else? Who would you choose as a guy? Oh, I was just thinking um, My Hero Academia, the mm-hmm. girl that makes, makes the things... Stuff, the crate stuff. Yeah, she's so hot. Yep. She's my type. I don't even know her name. Burnett. Yeah. Wears a skimpy high hero outfit. Yeah. Big, big titties. <laughs> Produces random things out of her fucking big titties. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think in the anime world, I can't even like, I can't personally list a, a male character because all the female characters are just, you know how they're drawn. They're so hot. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I don't even know if I had to think of a male. Maybe the split die guy. Oh, uh, Todoroki, I think is his Maybe name. Maybe Todoroki. Mm-hmm. He's kind of calm, cool, collective, you know? He's kind of like you. I was going to say, I was gonna say that. Yeah. <laughs> I, need, like, I, need to, I need to split that hair now. Or like Bakugo. Because uh, he's very like, like me. Like you. We'd be fucking psycho. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can Wendy sing the chorus of Glowed Eyes, please? Aww. No, but you can watch and listen on Spotify and YouTube. We have a music video. Jay. It's funny. This person actually comments, like, asks a lot of questions. Yeah, for she us. does. Is, she does? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know who you're talking about. Um, Are you going to sing for her? No, I'm not going to sing here. Aww. You have to check that out on my Spotify. It's Wendy, W-N-D-Y. Glodas. And you can Glodas. search YouTube, Glowed Eyes, too. We made a music video for it. You got me feeling so right. All right. I don't even know the words without <laughs> having the song on. Um, okay. That's all the questions on on our family standards. You have your mind oh, cat now? both of those ones? Yeah. 
Okay. Were you both E&M when you started dating or did one person sway it? We definitely were not. We were monogamous for hence, a long, long time. Hence why we got married. Yeah. We got married. We were still monogamous. And then since being in the industry. Thank you. That was cat pushing pen off chair. Uh, since being in the industry, we started having the discussions. And that's how it all started. Oh, I want to watch an anime for the first time ever. What do you suggest I start with? I mean, I have mine. What? I'm count down to three. Do you have one in mind? Sure. Three, two, one. Demon, Demon Slayer. Slayer. <gasps> so it has to be Demon Slayer because Demon Slayer... Well, Demon Slayer is just one of the best animes that came out during the time it came out too. But Demon Slayer already got lots of people that never watched anime to watch anime. Yeah. And that's because it does lots of things very well. Storyline, storytelling, animation, oh. the pace of everything too. Uh, and also like if you, once you start watching anime, you you realize that it's just it's more than just animation or cartoons. Like for some reason. Uh, the story is so deep in you, them. It's you, crazy. You feel so attached yeah and it, you just it just hits you on an emotional level no matter the subject content mm -hmm. like we watch haiku a volleyball a fucking volleyball oh, yeah. anime and our heartstrings like we, yeah. we were so in love with every character so uh, it doesn't have to be killing people or superpowers or heroes or whatever it is like man anime just does that really well and demon slayer nails that so and it's called demon slayer which like initially made me not want to watch it but it is so good and it hooks you right off the bat yeah and it's so beautiful that's my yeah. thing i need the animation style to be beautiful it's the prettiest it is it's, it's really good so fun to watch yeah so definitely what is your favorite part about making content other than the orgasms <laughs> honestly the orgasms aren't always the favorite they're not they're not always the favorite <laughs> you're you know? not the favorite yeah um the favorite part about making content for me is like actually just the the people that we've gotten to meet and the, the relationships that we've built to be honest but if you're talking about like just the best part about making content like with the two of us or just on our own i would say honestly just the the amount that it pushes me outside of my comfort zone and makes me be creative just doing it just doing it honestly yeah. just doing it uh, i get to try so many things doing something for yourself yeah being self-employed that's true. i think yeah. overall encompassing that's probably the favorite part about it I have to agree. It's mostly just like all the connections you make with people. Mm -hmm, definitely. Whoa, this is a big question. What is the best highlight of you and James's journey together for work or for life? <sighs> Guys. I can't, I can't think too deep about these. So We're on I, six years. I can only go on, <laughs> which feels like a long time still in a way. It's a long time. Um, if I have to say on the top of my head, I, I think just like being with someone for so long and like, truly trying your best to love each other and make things work that's a highlight on its own you know you know i think we've, we're both learning a lot now these days in my younger years i'd hear all the time about older people saying you know certain rules about marriage right like happy wife happy life and just like stuff that people older people would say uh the big one was like love is not a love is a not a what do they say love is not a choice or what, what did they say? Love is a choice. You have to really work for it or something like something that. Like that yeah. But like you hear all these things growing up and then you get into one, a marriage, and you are in it deep enough where you things change or you learn about each other more. And it is the truth. That mm -hmm. is the literal truth. And to be able to keep trying and, and to listen to each other and try our best to make things work, I think that is a huge highlight. Yeah. I agree. That's it, really. Everything's a highlight together, to be honest. Yeah, the, our whole life that we're like, living, it just that's that's it, period. I could say every time that we travel together, just like all the experiences we've had together, we how much to, growth we've done as humans together. Yeah. Like total different people. Yeah, exactly. But like different on the same level. Like we've both grown so much together. It's wild. Mm -hmm. Man, seeing James become an actual cat daddy. <laughs> melt my heart like literally i got to watch you from being like meh about cats to like i wasn't just meh about cats i was scared of them and i hated them yeah you know i, I really, didn't want to say it that way but yeah that was that's the truth yeah yeah i really had bad experience it's wild them, so yeah and like you know when we got the boys together i obviously saw you fall madly in love with them and it's just as exciting to watch it happen all over again with hoodie like as she comes and like cuddles you i'm like oh my god it's <laughs> yeah. happening 
Yeah, hoodie's a different story though. Hoodie's I know. A fucking brat. <laughs> I say it all the time. I want to say. I want to say. I hate you, but you're cute as hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, it's really hard to choose. Mm-hmm. So it's everything you can. And yeah. like work, I can't pick something specific about work other than the fact that like we literally built family standards together. You know, like that's huge. Yeah. That's our baby. That is us. It's wild. Even just like, um, again, what, what I was saying earlier about do, we're doing all the sorts of content videos right now. Even the video that we just did briefly on our story being like, hey, everyone and our new followers, yeah. we're family standards. And like, the, even that felt kind of weird. But, you mm-hmm. know, and, I, and then I, I reshared that on my personal, mm-hmm. personal Instagram. And I'm just like, wow, like I'm just, hey, we're family standards and we do this, you know, yeah. just, just telling everyone in my in my world, you know, and it's very interesting. Just owning it, really. What is you and James's favorite stage at Shambhala? I'm going to count down. Three, two, one. The village. village. Yes. Yeah. The village, I think, for sure. It has to be. Number two would be a close tie between, actually, uh, oh, fuck. Number two would be a tie between Pagoda and Fractal mm-hmm. for different reasons, mm-hmm. which is why I might put Pagoda into two. Mm-hmm. Just because, like... We didn't get uh, to experience Fractal very well this year because it was too busy. That's true. So we were at the back of the stage. It's yeah. not as fun. Yeah. I like being at the front of Fractal. And it's sad, though, because next year Fractal's different. Ch- yeah, changing. That was our last year with... But maybe it'll be better that way. Who knows? With the stage maybe, maybe. not being a circle I've like never, that. I've never really been in love with Fractal. Like, super in love with it. But Pagoda Lights. Yeah, the lasers. Right? Oh how do God. you how do you say no to that? But so. there's so many lasers at Fractal. We're just not at the front. Not like... Not, I don't think it's like Pagoda, though. No, but then like... Then Pagoda has the house and then the display onto the house. And the dancers with the yes, crazy background. everything. So back in the day, when they didn't care about fucking people hurting themselves as much, Fractal used to have, like, crazy... Platform like, stages you can go up to? Platforms in the trees. Like, tiny one-person platforms. Yeah, it's And wild, I used dude. to just be fucking up in the tree like go-go dancing by myself and that shit was so much fun i used to love fractal for that because i don't really like being touched by a lot of people i like being right in the middle of everything but like having my own space i love platforms village used to have more platforms too mm-hmm. yeah uh so yeah back then those were the good old days fucking 2013 2014 baby but yeah no village for sure village i'm happy anywhere i can be anywhere in that stage and i'm fucking happy yeah that's how you know it's number one yep Back, side, front, up, doesn't matter. I'm happy. <laughs> and like every time you're at the village, a different spot, it just feels different too. Yeah. You know, where, wherever, depending where you are, it's a whole different stage. Like, yeah. Yeah. I love the village. Oh, yeah. See, Here, here's the question that I ran first earlier. If you could have a meal with any three people in the world, who would it be? Celebrities, dead or alive? I couldn't tell you. Yeah, you'd pro- we'd probably choose our family members, to be honest, more than anything. I'm a, it's a celebrity, so like. I know. So none. Yeah, it'd be kind of funny. It'd be kind of funny to have dinner with Eminem, Britney Spears, and Christina Aguilera. It'd be kind of funny just because of all the beef and the shit. It'd be funny. Plus, they were like such an era together. But um, God, Britney would just, I don't know. I can't even. We're not even going to go there. Doesn't matter. Anyway, how do I tell my new. I feel like I'm very mouthy. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Like breathing? You're all good. I was like that for a bit earlier, too. Yucky. I don't like it. It's my throat. You fucked it. How do I tell my new girlfriend that I like feet stuff? I don't want to weird her out. I think honestly, simple it is, is you just tell her. Yeah. You just tell her and hope and trust that what you guys have together, the love that you guys have, is strong enough that when you disclose this to her, she'll listen and she'll accept it and take it in. Mm-hmm. Who knows what her answer will be until you do it, but... I don't know if you're if you're feeling weird about tr- wanting to tell her this then maybe there's some other things you need to tell her too I don't know start lighter if there's something lighter than feet <laughs> see I'm like in my opinion I kind of just I don't know how old you are but I feel like those kind of questions when they're coming up like that are just coming from younger people and that's just my assumption why can't you just offer to give her an experience kind of explain it like tell her what you want to do to her Maybe start off light. Keep your dick out of it at first. Tell her like, hey, would you be down for me to give you a foot massage with oil? And, you know, would you be okay if I used my mouth or whatever? 
and pleased you but touched your feet start start with something like that see if she's cool with it because sometimes if you just like flat out be like hey i want to fuck your souls it might be a little bit much at first start slow <laughs> see how she feels with it that's my advice because it's not actually that bad somebody telling me like hey i'm really into foot stuff i'm you know it's a little bit harder to be okay with than for somebody to be like hey can i massage your feet tonight and then as you're massaging their feet be like hey can i actually tell you that like i actually really enjoy this do you enjoy this and then making it a casual conversation and see if they're down to continue doing stuff like that but maybe advancing it you know bring it up like that because that's a lot easier to fathom when you're actually getting to see how it is and everyone's into feet stuff a little differently yeah. or to different extents yeah like maybe this person is you love feet all you want to do is massage it yep check you're done yeah <laughs> you never know so yeah. also again on the on the tier of things it's not that crazy it's not <laughs> it really <laughs> it's re isn't it's really not <laughs> i feel like these days people should just be like prepared for every new part that they have to have something something <laughs> ah fuck Okay, I'm going to write this down. I'm so sorry. I said that I was going to do this yesterday. You guys should do the Sprite challenge. That would be so much fun. I mm. fucking said I was going to buy a Sprite. Okay, we're going to do that. I'm so sorry. I'm going to write that down. Oh, you know what it is, so. Perfect. You're not supposed to know. Damn it. I fucked up. Uh, somebody said, let's get married. I don't think I can. We're already married, so technically it's not legal. Have you ever been to Australia? No, I have not. Nope. I would have liked to have, but now with the spiders and the snakes, yeah, I'm good. There are a lot of followers in Australia, though. Maybe one day, but... If somebody can promise me a place to stay that not does on the not top of have list, for sure. monster snakes in trees and monster spiders, I don't know if I can do it, man. There's a lot of places in the world that seem just as nice without those things. Bucket list travel destinations. I don't really have a lot, to be honest. Japan. Japan's like number one for me. And then I don't really have anything else. I'm just go with the flow. Vietnam with you would be really cool. Oh, for sure. So yeah. like that's and your mom. But I've been there before. But that's yeah. more of a together thing. Yeah. And then like I always say Greece just because it's really pretty there. But it's other than that, I have no aspiration to go there. Japan is for sure number one for me. I think I'd really love to go to Japan. And I'm just kind of on the train of like, <laughs> she's just barely out of frame. It's sad. She needs to get in here more. Uh, I'm just kind of on the train of like, I want experiences. And I want the place to be great, but I, I'm not really craving to go anywhere, but I'm super duper down to do things and have experiences. So whatever works out, you know, then I'm down. I'm looking forward to traveling more in the future for fun, though, because like you can say that we're traveling a lot even now. I think lots of people, lots of our friends or people that know us will be like, wow, you guys are traveling a lot. But yeah. I'm looking forward to like at a time where we're more financially free and stable and just to actually just be like, yeah, let's go. Yeah, because right now we're going to all these places, but like, you know, we're going to Miami. We're going to go to an Airbnb for a week, fuck a bunch of people and come home. Yeah. <laughs> we're not even really going to like experience that much. So yeah, it's hard. Same with like LA when we were there, you know, same same yeah. thing. I mean, we did a little bit of exploring, but yeah, not not majorly. Have you ever fucked a guy in a wheelchair? If not, you should try it. There's a lot of different types of people that I haven't fucked and I'd be down. That's all I can say. Favorite big dog breed and small dog breed, in quotes. But I know you guys are cat people. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. I don't know. Um, favorite big dog. I'm pretty simple, to be honest. Golden Retriever, Lab. Just really good, well-rounded dogs. If I had the, the, all the time in the world, I would get like a Border Collie or something. And, and oh, perfect God. space for something like that and train it like a crazy guy. But mm. uh, I think something simpler like, like a Lab or something would be fine. A smaller one, I think would be a Frenchie. Um, but yeah, those were, my, those were my options. I don't have favorite dog breeds. I'm so sorry. I would literally just go to the SPCA and see which one I connect with the most. I grew up always having mutts and I loved the shit out of them. So, Or like the little, we had Mexican like rescue dogs. They're always so, you can just tell when they're a Mex Mexican rescue dog. But yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't care about breeds, to be honest. <sighs> it's the same person. Oh shoot, the same person asked us a lot of things. If you could have a different kind of cat breed, what would it be? We kind of have all the breeds that we want. Maybe a Bengal. Bengal or a ragdoll would be interesting. Oh, we, <laughs> I never knew that I liked ragdolls until that one TikTok girl. Yeah. I don't remember her name, but her ragdoll is fucking hilarious. Yeah, a ragdoll would be interesting. Just a little floppy. Sure floppy toppy but other than that like i mean cats i feel like are a little different in regards of like breeds yeah because like, all cats really are the same other than the specific breeds but it doesn't really matter to me really no yeah we have our munchkin 
we have a raccoon and yeah those are kind of the bucket list ones i kind of said after that that we were only gonna adopt in the future anyway like i'm kind of tired of paying out of our asshole for a breed of cat you know like, especially when you can just rescue some like we rescued the totally. boys the boys like, were rescues and they're wonderful they're cats. amazing cats so would you rather have a couple's painting date or a couple's gaming date three two one painting, painting. yeah arts and crafts <laughs> least favorite rope light color least favorite what rope light so like the lights in her bedroom like those oh the string light the led lights yeah oh least, least favorite. favorite color it's actually so funny That's that you really say funny. this because as i mounted those lights mm -hmm. in our bedroom uh, amanda wasn't here when i did that i actually filtered through all of the lights just to pick up my favorites <laughs> i knew you would i picked up my top three i didn't actually choose a bottom three <laughs> i personally don't think I mean, unless you just despise a color for some reason, there's no reason to hate a color. No. Every color is really nice. There's just some colors that are better or some colors are more beneficial. Some colors are shine brighter naturally. Mm. Some colors are darker, like the reds and the oranges. So if, like, if I'm ready for bed, I'm getting ready to close, closer to bedtime, I'll like it to, it to be a little bit darker or it's easier on my eyes. But other than that, I can't hate on a color. I just, it's also hard because now that we have the green wall, the light is very different. different. It, it's different for sure. I'd say my least favorite would have to be when it's not sure if it wants to be white or that weird shade of yellow. I think somewhere in the middle of that. And I don't mean off white. I mean like too yellow than that, but not yellow enough. Yeah, I, I think it's because I think because yellow is just so close to lights already. Like yeah. there's a yellow light right there. Mm. It's funny because like when you... When you, when you surround yourself with like LED lights all the time and then you get back to a cruddy fluorescent yellow tinted light, it's like, what am I looking at? Mm -hmm. So that's probably the why you feel that mm -hmm. way. Because if it's when it's any other color, you're like, ooh, that's banging. Mm -hmm. It pops a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. What a funny question. It is. How long was the longest period you've gone without having sex? Fuck, I don't know. It was when I first started college and I think I was priding myself on it being like three months or was it six months? No. I think it was together or just in general. Oh, I meant uh, as an individual. What are they saying? I don't know. How long was the longest period you've gone without sex? Oh, for some reason, thought it was us together. Oh. Well, fuck, I couldn't tell you. Oh. M maybe even like a year plus, maybe when I was in college and wasn't dating anyone, or when I was in, you know, my old job wasn't doing anything. Like mm. a year plus for sure, probably. I only, I only, I was only fucking people when I was in relationships with them, really. Mm. So. Yeah, not I. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> like literally, when you met me, I was at, I was finally just changing you're my life. A, you're trying to become a nun. I was. <laughs> <laughs> when you met me, you were a total slut, <laughs> and, and, like, and it came out of you. That you being a slut just came out. You know what I mean? That's just who you are. And then when you met me, you're like, I'm gonna change my ways. I'm gonna be a nun. <laughs> yeah. I'm not wrong there. <laughs> I had hit rock bottom. I had hit rock bottom with a lot of things in my life. And I was like, I'm going to change my ways. I'm going to start dressing like a hippie. I'm going to start doing this and this and this. And I'm going to refrain from having sex with random boys. I'm going to focus on school. Uh, so, yeah, I think I made it. I can't remember. I remember specifically being proud of myself for making it as long as I did. And mm -hmm. I don't know if it was three or six months. It was one of the two, regardless. Mm -hmm. Why the hell are you so perfect? <laughs> Well, shit. I definitely don't think I'm perfect. Are you talking to him or me? Him? That's your manny cat, so it's talking to you. Oh, you're right. I'm definitely not perfect, but thank you. I don't think anyone's perfect. Yeah. Nothing to ask. Just want to keep telling you I love you so much. Keep being amazing. Thank you. These people better stop telling you they love you. Why? No, I'm just being that unnecessary protective husband. Oh. Does it make you feel better that I was a woman? I don't, I, I don't care. <laughs> I'm trying to trap you. A piece of advice that you were told that you'll never forget. Ooh. Mm, that's hard. I gotta use my brain. I feel like life lessons get told to you and then you apply them and then they don't really... I ha At least for me personally, I haven't had a one life lesson or a piece of advice that just stuck through. Like I learned from it in my system now. It's not like I have to keep thinking about it to keep moving on with my life. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just one that you'll never forget. I shouldn't say one that replays in your head constantly. But if I don't forget it then it shouldn't be in my head. Otherwise, I've forgotten all of the ones that I've been given, you know? 
It's the same way as that we have to sit here and think about the answers to our questions because it's in your brain. Maybe it's because maybe it's just a me thing. There's not one piece of advice that sticks in my head. Hmm. I've forgotten them all. Literally can't even think of one. It's so hard when you put on the spot like this. <laughs> if there has to be something along the lines of something that I had to choose. I don't even know if this is advice really, but it's more or less of the fact that not everyone gets to experience what true deep love is like. And when you do find something like that, you know that it's special, cherish it and try your best to keep it. And that obviously came from my older clients from my mm. back in my massage days. But I think it's a truth. Lots of people go through life not never ever getting to meet a partner that you can really click with or you really fall in love with. You might meet people, you might meet partners and you might love them, but I don't know, man. I mean, I'm extremely biased. <laughs> But I, I think the love that we have is amazingly beautiful. And I know it's the deepest, truest love. And yeah, cherish it because lots of people don't get to experience it. Is that advice? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, here's one that I definitely will never forget. I can't say that I always listen to it. But it's the try not to go to bed angry with each other. I feel like that's just a simple one Yeah. that people tell you. I do think it's important. It doesn't always work that way. Yeah, I, I, maybe along the same territories because of the book that I'm reading, the Atomic Habits one. I sh I've been taking photos of key points. One of them was like um, to make tasks seem less daunting, like break it down to its core fundamental and it, it will make it seem less daunting. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, do, I'll read this one out specifically because I think this is actually a really good one. So I can't find the exact example, but it was like, you know, if you want to start to exercise, um, instead of like thinking about trying to get to the gym all the time, start with the first phase and that's just change into your workout clothes. Because sometimes just mm. doing that alone, well, what's the next step then? Oh, go outside and go for a run, right? When, but when people think about just getting their ass to the gym and what are they going to do, it just, it, it creates it to be really daunting, you know? So yeah, phase one is change into your workout clothes. Then the second step is step outside, try taking a walk. And then it says phase three, drive to the gym, exercise for five minutes and then leave. Phase four, exercise for 15 minutes, at least once per week. Phase five, exercise three times per week. But it all started with putting on your gym clothes. Makes things a little less daunting. The one that I was trying to find specifically was like, you want your relationship to be better with your partner? Well, don't overcomplicate things by thinking about all the things that could be wrong. Do something useful for your partner one time a day. And just that alone will probably create lots of connecting things that will make up your relationship a lot better. Instead of trying to think about all the reasons of why your relationship could be improved, mm. you know? It could be as simple as do something useful for your partner every day. I thought that was important. Where did you get that from? The uh, the book. What was it? Atomic Habits by James Clear. Ho, can I find someone like you? <laughs> Not even how, just ho. How is it spelled? H-O. Oh. Ho. Maybe you forgot the W. <laughs> Whatever. If it was an H-O-E, I think I'm <laughs> That'd different. be really funny. <laughs> I don't know, you can't. Maybe you can, but they won't be me, so. Or they might be. I have a lot of doppelgangers. Yeah, but they won't be exactly like you. Or I'm the doppelganger. I can't figure that one out yet. But Would you ever come to the UK? Absolutely. I just love your whole vibe. Keep doing what you're doing. No questions. Just want to say you're gorgeous. Thanks, guys. Those were all very nice. That's all for the Q&As from Instagram. Let's move on see what we got in those emails. Yeah, I'll try to do one. Maybe two. We have th a couple. We there's, have, there's a handful that we have to There's a handful that we yet. have to do still. Hey guys, so as a male on social media, it's pretty common to receive messages from industry people. A couple questions on the topic. Is it rude to ask if they're reaching out to you as a potential customer slash trying to make a sale or actually for the sake of conversing? Obviously there's some that bring it up within the first hour of chatting and others has been after a few days of chatting and some not at all. So focusing on the ones that don't bring it up, I'm asking about your thoughts as it's still from their industry account and potentially persona. I know some people use real, some people use fake, I'm assuming names or accounts, whatever, okay. which leads me to second guess their intentions. Just to clarify too, I'm asking purely about people who are reaching out to me and initiating the conversation, not anyone who have replied to stories, posts, etc. about. Hope you guys pick mine. Okay, right off the hop, they're all fake. Yeah. Every single one of those accounts is fake. Or if they're real, I think they really are just trying to get you to subscribe to their page or whatever, you know what I mean? But most of the times it's fake. Yeah, I mean, the only way they would be real is if they're, like, not big enough creators. Like, there's no way big creators are wasting their time doing that. Mm -hmm. There's just no way. There's so many other ways to get 
subscribers or to get money or to whatever that's crazy unless they've hired an assistant to like mass message all their followers or something like that but messaging for hours or days no but he also says and some don't even bring it up at all so it's really interesting the different um times and 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 ways people are talking to about this because the ones that we get are clearly fake all the time like very body very yeah it's the same shit but but they're very good with what they're doing they're really changing it up of how they're doing it but mm. it's still you can tell it's a, it's a it's a bot it's fake he's obviously encountering lots of different also how many scenarios. how many people are you talking to and like why are you giving them all that time of the time of day i mean he's i mean a girl's talk as a guy a girl's talking to you huh. you're gonna talk back you're single it makes you're me anything? wonder if this person has something that people want hard to do know. you have a big social media following are you like an athlete i don't know i think he it would say but all it says is as a male on social media that's it as a male it's on pretty common media. to receive messages from industry people oh man i've never heard this before so yeah. i'm baffled i I've, think it's i think it's all fake i've fake never people. heard this i don't and like you made a good point if you're in the industry you don't have time just to fucking to chat with people to try to get mm -mm. to try to even get a quick sale unless they are genuinely talking to you and don't bring it up at all then maybe they are trying to get to know you because Jesse's actually told us a story about similar like that, where she'll actually end up sure. talking to some people because she's into them, but right. they're usually, like you said, big following. They're usually yeah. like something with higher status, whatever the case is, but she will do that. But how are these people finding him? I don't know. I Why don't are know. they starting conversations with him? I don't know. How does that happen? There's gotta be something. Either he's following them, has a big enough following that like he bumps to the top of the priority page, and then they see him, think he's attractive, and start this conversation. Or they're all just fake. Or they're all just fake. Yeah. Because it fake just people. Yeah. If you're if you're following a bunch of like hot industry people or fake accounts or whatever, and they just like hire people to mass message you, then maybe I don't know. Maybe there are some people that are doing this as a, as a hoax to like really try to win you over and like get information out of you, passwords. Who knows? Who knows? Just don't trust it. I wouldn't trust any of it. Yeah. Uh, no literally any industry people that i like know personally we all say like we don't follow back we never instigate messages on any social media except for like on our paid platforms and that's how you know that we're real we're not going to follow you back and we're not going to dm you ever yeah. so yeah, the only people we're really talking to are other content creators really yeah dming and stuff like that on social media yeah yeah sorry to burst your bubble could be wrong i we definitely could be wrong but yeah if, but i still wouldn't trust it i wouldn't trust it mm -hmm. i wouldn't put your heart out on the line that's for darn sure i wouldn't share any personal information yeah okay hey my partner has brought up the possibility of a threesome with his wife in parentheses she's a kitchen table poly here i'm interested sexually but also hesitant because it's his primary partner his mm -hmm. wife mm -hmm. we all get along well and i don't want anything to really change that dynamic any advice on how to prepare or boundaries to set if we do proceed? Love you guys. That's tricky. It is tricky. First and foremost, I got to ask, and I'm, I'm assuming it's, you know, the way that you're talking about this, that it has been done this way, but it should be the three of you having this conversation. Yes, I was going to say, he's bringing it up. He's bringing it up. Has she brought it up? Exactly. Have you guys brought it up together? I would hope that he has talked to the primary partner about this already himself. Yeah. But regardless... It should be a conversation that the three of you have together. You said you guys all get along well too. Totally. So, And you don't want anything to change. But if you guys are all interested in something like that, then yeah. The best piece of advice was just sit down all three of you guys together and yeah. talk about... Have dinner and have an adult conversation about it. Yeah, for sure. Um, the only thing that I could imagine is like, if by chance y'all have this threesome and then, you know, between, between the women, you guys see something that you didn't see prior that sparks that tiny bit of jealousy or like opens your eyes to the other relationship or like the bond that you might have with each other maybe it could it could make you see something that you know you weren't quite prepared for but you guys are all openly poly and seem to all be getting along anyway so i, I can't imagine that yeah. happening but that would be worst case scenario probably yeah you know what i mean or let's just say he is different sexually with one partner and the other and so there's and then shows seeing, in person and then you're seeing a different sexual side sure of your partner it you might feel some way it might make you feel a type of way but that would be like worst case scenario yeah you know yeah everyone's poly differently obviously mm -hmm. some people you know don't let their partners see i think they call them their metas which is right. their other partners like they just don't all know separate you date separately you be yeah. together separately the fact that you guys say that um you guys get along well 
yeah. clearly shows that you guys are all hanging out totally already so yeah i think i might have laid all the points out to be honest mm -hmm. i think the biggest thing is discussing with all three of you guys if that's something you guys would truly be interested in and yeah i think all the points that amanda said was probably the worst case scenarios mm -hmm. and at the, en at the end of the day i look at it kind of the same as as if somebody were to come to me and be like hey i might w kind of want to sleep with my best friend but i don't know if i want that to ruin the relationship you kind of got to look at it that way too like okay can you and your friend have that conversation enough to be adults and know that regardless if you have sex or not can you come to terms with that and get past it and still be friends after you know it's, it's the same situation sex doesn't have to change everything but it can if you let it i would think if there's enough open conversation about it beforehand whether it's good or bad that y'all can just move on after regardless mm -hmm. how do you feel do you want to do another one the next one's really long, long isn't it so maybe we won't yeah and i'll just say this one because it's short and it's not even one it's just a statement okay okay this is something we just got today actually so okay so so there are a couple more big ones if you guys feel like you're being skipped we're sorry yeah we will get to them we'll get to them but this has been a long episode and we're gonna save them for the next for one sure. it's been a fucking long day i didn't it's 10 p.m at our time right now i didn't expect the podcast to finish at this time so yeah, it's we been said a it was day. gonna be a short one yeah i also went to bed at 2 a.m and woke up at 8 a.m so all right not a question oh i'll make sure my voice is really good for this Ooh. One. not a question just a comment i find listening to you both talk to be like asmr to me your voices are so sexy but also unexpectedly comforting mandy your little giggle when you get excited is so adorable and james has such a strong yet sweet tone when he speaks Thank you both for being so open and candid with both your sex and personal life. At least specifically, she signs her name, by female from Southern California. <laughs> Aww. Yeah. Also, nice, nice uh, fucking sex voice you got going on there. Oh, we just slow God it. damn. You just slow it down a little bit. You just bit, made you know? everyone's panties wet. I hope she's listening to this and listening to that. <laughs> I think about this a lot. Imagine being that person, like, sending people an email listening back hearing yours being spoken in mm. that voice <laughs> <laughs> but like you know like all the people say i love your podcast i would love hearing that we read it and acknowledged it and like be happy for that like yeah. it's a mutual happiness yeah you know? i like that a lot appreciate you that's very yeah. sweet thank you he's definitely got the sexy soul street sultry voice yeah but you got the f even in another comment on a video someone said recently that um I love just watching you guys talk. Uh, I love Amanda's energy and giggliness and James's like soothe, soothe voice or whatever it is. Like It's a good combo, I think, yeah. going on here. So yeah, glad sure. you enjoy. You know when you first listen to your own voice, how much you fucking hate it? Do you not feel that way? When I was younger, yes. Yeah, or like you listen to your own voicemail on your phone for the first time in like the year and you're like, what the fuck? That's what my voice sounds like? Like I swear I used to feel that way a lot. So I think two things with this. I think the big thing is, I don't know if this is right or not. Fact check me on this, but this is something I heard when I was really young. The reason why your voice sounds weird is because something in your brain actually changes the voice, your own voice in your head. So it always sounds different when you listen to your own voice in your head. Like there's something happens, it's just not possible. That's why your voice always sounds weird to you. Well, it's because you're projecting your voice this way and your ears are hearing it. There's, so just, there's, some, there's just something okay. about it. Okay. But I also think um, better equipment oh, yeah. and doing it more helps. Mm -hmm. I think uh, like when I first started getting into music deeply and hearing my voice back constantly and mixing it and making it sound good and working on your voice, that's when things start feeling a little better. But when you also don't have the confidence and your voice sounds kind of weird or whatever, like I feel like that makes you feel less confident in, in the way you sound and it makes you feel like your voice is cringy, right? But when you hear your voice like through this podcast or music or whatever, I think it helps a lot. Mm. Yeah. Hearing your voice in this uh, truly does help a lot. I've never worked on my voice, but now, I mean, I've heard you talk about this before. It does kind of make me question it a little bit. What do you mean? I don't know. Like what if i put some work into my voice could i make it sound better i don't know yeah i've always been really tempted to do asmr stuff like mouth sounds and nails and stuff like just that. are fun yeah i don't really like listening to it but i i kind of like even though i was scratching my chin earlier <laughs> <laughs> we should have given a trigger warning on that uh. trigger warning asmr <laughs> anyways <laughs> 
I, lots of people always say like, why do you put your headphones on when you do your podcast? Like they're unnecessary, which yes, oh. you are technically right. They are unnecessary, yeah. but I think listening, well, for me, um, I make sure the audio levels are in check. So I'm between I'm, us talking, he makes sure that the levels are good. Sometimes I'll go off to the side of the camera here. Everyone always says, why is James off to the side? Because my laptop's right there and I'm making sure our vocals aren't, aren't peaking or anything. But also it's no different from if you work a, uh, if you work at like a computer job and you want to get into the zone and you put music in before you start doodling or something, mm. it gets you in the zone. And being able to hear each other's voices so clearly in our ears yeah. really helps us or me get into the zone of this podcast way better. Um, so yeah, unnecessary technically, but th- I personally think it makes a huge difference. Also noise canceling. Do you know how much I'd be distracted if I could hear everything else going on in my house between the cats and the other people that live in this house in other areas and the, the cars outside and the everything? Yeah. This is very helpful. Just hearing our voices together <laughs> yeah. at the same volumes really does help. So yeah. Fuck you guys. <laughs> Jeez Louise. I just get, we get so many of those comments, man. Oh, about the like, headphones? Yeah. If you Almost don't, every podcast I, lo- I watch. Yeah, but people, I think some people think it's, oh, it's just a podcast thing. Okay. Oh, you do a podcast? Oh, you need headphones on. But I, I can't imagine doing without it, to be honest. No. I, I mean, I, we did do it, me and Zoe. Yeah, which is fine. Those are the three of us. You guys were close fine. to each other. But I really do think this helps get in the zone of just like getting into the podcast. I like it. Me too. Helps me with my senses. For sure. Mm-hmm. Anyway, guys, that be all. That is it. Longer than than we expected, I think for sure. Yeah. I think for sure. I think for sure. Uh, but like, yeah, we'll be in Miami when this drops, guys. Yeah. And um, I don't. Hopefully, know. it comes out scheduled properly. Yeah, I am always. <laughs> I'm afraid when we're not when we're out of town or out of country and stuff. Scheduling always freaks me out, especially when it comes to the podcast. So hopefully that works out. Uh, mm-hmm. But hopefully we can stay on our podcast routine for another two weeks but there's some big things happening oh yeah i'm not even gonna tell you anything yeah we we so i was even not sure if we're able to do this one but i'm happy we got this one out but be warned we might be late on the next episode it depends there's a lot of things in the air there's a lot of things in the air so we were we're very busy so We'll let you guys know on our on our Instagram for sure. I think we're we're definitely the most active on our Instagram, by the way, when 100%. it comes to the podcast stuff and updating you guys. Yeah. If you guys ever want to really know up to date stuff, follow our Family Standards podcast on Instagram. Yeah, you'll be updated immediately, and that's when we also do the Q and A's as well. So if you want to ask any of our questions, but Instagram's the way to go. Yeah. we'll let Instagram know if we will be delayed for sure. Yeah. Also, same thing. Please subscribe. It means a lot to us. Like, comment, but for sure subscribe. Tell friends about our podcast. That's been great stuff hearing too. Lots of friends showing friends our podcast to try to mm-hmm. help them in their relationships and stuff. Ah, oh, so heartwarming, it's guys. So nice. Thank you so much. And then if you have long questions that don't fit in the question boxes on Instagram, yep. shoot us an email. It can be a question or just anything that you want us to give advice on. It's just family standards podcast at gmail.com. Yeah. And that no almost... spam or dick pics, please, for fuck's <laughs> sakes. <laughs> no, we've been doing, we've been getting lovely people. We've been getting very nice I also things. I like, can just imagine eventually people are going to start taking advantage so. of this. I think the only people that, that, that really email us are, are, are true listeners. Yeah. Because we, we advertise it the most on our podcast. And um, you, you, can, you can answer bigger questions or ask bigger questions than just on Instagram. Well, every I, once in a while I post it on Mandy Cat Instagram though. And my DMs are turned off. And so I'm like, fuck, people are just going to abuse the shit out of this. The thing is, it takes a little bit more to go to your emails. Yeah, that's Type true. out the the, uh, the email that's true. And, and continue with that versus just clicking a button and typing on social, on instagram for example so Fair. thank you guys for your emails i really appreciate it i've been itching my face this whole time i cannot wait to get this makeup off my face All right, i CTFO. hate makeup i love you guys we're family standards sex happens here Peace see you guys out. soon hopefully peace out <laughs> i i i want this in in well, that to do it. Hoodie. Do you want to come be with mommy? Oh, da, 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 da. Look at this little tootie. Hi. <coughs> Look at this foot kicking herself in the face. Mom, don't do that. Don't do that.